can describe it. An explosion of bursting into joy from the name of God. The state of hockey is a state of grace. Are you calling it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, what are you calling that? Yes. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't leave me alone. I'm going to, I'll make French toast. All right, let me get Alec in here and then I'll get everything all situated with the lineups. All right, everybody, it's a Saturday, April 13, 2024. How's everybody doing out there today? It is time for the College Hockey Frozen Four Championship Final in St. Paul, Minnesota. I got Alec Nobby here with me. Let's get into the starting lineup. So first, for Boston College, head coach by Greg Brown, it sounds like this. Oscar Jelvik, Cutter Goche, Andre Gasseau, Gabe Perot, Will Smith, Ryan Leonard, Jamie Armstrong, Jack Malone, Colby Ambrosio, Connor Joyce, Mike Postma, Gentry Schamberger on defense, we drew Fortescue, Eamon Powell, Jacob Bengstrom, Lucas Gustafson, Aiden Hirschchuk, and Adam Mittenen. Charlie Lenny will probably be the extra defenseman, and Jacob Fowler will be in net. And for Denver, they're going to be head coached by David Carl, who was the member of Team USA that helped them bring gold. Here is their starting lineup. So it'll be Sam Harris, Tristan Bros, Jack Devine, McCade Webster, Aiden Thompson, Mikito Makia. Rieger Lawrence, Kieran Cerberin, Jared Wright, Massimo Rizzo, Carter King, and Connor Capone. On defense, be Sean Barron, Z. Bouillon, Austin Buckberger, Shea Bouillon, and Lucas Olvestad and Kent Anderson. Tristan Lomair is usually their extra forward, and Matt Davis will be in goal. Alec, I know that you've been busy dealing with some stuff through family. I'm uh, going to be working a couple of things here today. we got this game, maybe even any the NHL look-ins. So a lot for us to do again on this Saturday, and thank you for joining me. What do you see in this matchup? I see a possible legend here for Boston College if they turn out and have everyone involved. Denver, on the other hand, of course, we mentioned their depth. They're one of the deepest teams, if not the deepest team in the nation, by how they move, how they are coached. Especially looking on through their, all that defense. Sam Harris, Boston Buckberger, they were the heroes in the first two rounds. Tristan Gross in the third round, he scored both of the overtime winners for Denver. I, I love Denver's chances, but don't count on BC. They're the best team in the nation for a reason, and it's not an accident. Yeah, that's where I'm leaning as well, Alex. So we'll see what this matchup's going to bring for us. But honestly, if you're looking at the two matchups, I think that we would want to see in the finals. It probably is these two teams. So let's go ahead and get into this now. As this will be bounced off a couple changes. Denver had the puck for the moment. Now this will go back to Boston College on the defensive side. So once I start to get some numbers and names around, I'll be able to call more of those right now. It's just a little bit of a neutral zone battle. And this will be sent back here for Eamon Powell. He'll be able to fire this one in. Again, this is in St. Paul, Minnesota. It's the Frozen Four Championship. And between these two teams, to be honest, Alec, there really isn't. You could split hairs in between both of these as far as what could happen in this game. I would expect with the goaltender that we have between Jacob Fowler and Matt Davis, this could be a low-scoring event. Here's a three-on-two developing and a wrist shot. This will be blocked aside by Fowler and toward the right side boards now as Denver working on the right side red line. They'll crisscross a couple times and pick this up down the left. It's Thompson now waiting as he's trying to drag this all the way around. He was near the rough side red line. Now he's in the right side. Now he finally gets stick lifted, so it kind of looked like a Gustav Nyquist shifted for the former Red Wing. He was spinning all around and trying to make something happen. Now Boston College go ahead and start again on their own end. Just underway here. This is on ESPN2, about 18.05. We'll have to go on the first. I'm sure Alec Vision is ahead of me per usual. This is off the drop, and this will go around the end boards now. I've heard find a defenseman there for the Eagles, but this is back and around that now. Denver. Keeping the Eagles on the outside, a wrister. This one will get bounced up in the air. This is away from Davis. Now back in behind his cage. Here's a one-timer setup, and this is a great block out in front of the Pioneers. Able to escape the danger. Pipioni on the fourth line. Able to get this one down to the right side. Dot. 
It's flipped up in the air and sent back into neutral. Denver will go ahead and take some changes and they'll fire it in across that line, but it's iced 1731. I know Denver is showing that hard work on full display, but you know who else is showing that hard work? Let's jump over to the NHL. The Winnipeg Jets will force a first round matchup between them and the Colorado Avalanche, which secures the Dallas Stars Central Division title. Boy, that game is not close. It's 7 0. We're still playing in the third there. 7 nothing Jets, despite whatever we have settled in for playoff matchups, as you said. That still surprises me when you see Colorado in the seventh spot against them. Jared Bednar must not be happy. Especially since this game is at home. Exactly. That doesn't happen at Ball Arena. Here's a good windmill. This will go near the right side. Pinball off the outside of the cage. That was right off the rush there for the Eagles. As this will be whistled and blown dead, maybe in offsides. Yeah, it was 24. Andre Gasol, that top six line. You can call either one of these two Boston College lines first lines, mm -hmm. and you would not be wrong. He had a wide open net, Ooh. and he just found the outside post. Unlucky break for this young kid on Carter Goki's Go line. That kind of looks like the boards that used to be at Jill Lewis Arena. What a lively pinball bounce. It goes right to Gasso, and as you said, right off the outside of the cage. Yeah, it does. Man, oh, man. So we're going to have a lot to talk about today as far as the NHL scoreboard again. In about another hour here, it'll be Red Wings, Maple Leafs. Another hour from that, you got the Bruins and the Pens. And again, this is going to come down to game 82 as far as who gets in. As far as next week, I think I might have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday open, but the rest of it's going to be pretty busy with capsules. And I know the same thing for Alec. We're going to probably be jumping in either NBA play-in or you could have uh, the start of the NHL playoffs. There's going to be a lot going on. Yeah, yeah especially looking on to that Saturday side next week, just a week from now to start of the Stanley Cup playoffs, but also the NBA playoffs. We also have the mm -hmm. Play-in soon to come. We have just two confirmed matchups: one, the play-in one, in the playoffs. The Hawks will travel to Chicago to face the Bulls, and the Mavericks will travel to LA to face the Clippers. I think I might try to key in on Mavs Clips. How does that sound? That looks like the matchup to watch. I like Dallas's chances. I think so too. They've been playing well of late. Again, those trades have been good. As this is Booyam with an outstretched pass. You got a couple of them right now. And Shea, I believe, is also a Red Wings product. As this is now stolen by the Eagles. Play up off the backhand now. And this will look to be start again. We'll get all settled here. It's Boston College. And we'll fire this down 70 feet. Matt Davis will go ahead and play with the stick. He quickly turns around, able to escape the danger. And now Denver and the All Reds will try to take this one left to right. Pick it up off the backhand. Here's an open area back to D now as Denver continues to matriculate this puck. It bounces off of one of the forwards, and this will be sent back across the neutral zone. We'll gain the entry again. Forwards immediately going to take a change here. Now the Eagles have this one on their own end. This will be an outstretched pass as Benson will send this one in, and now Denver able to intercept again. They show Sean Barron's a second-round pick in the 2021 NHL draft for the Avalanche. You know, Alec had mentioned him as well as far as one of those players to watch. But you look between Boston College and Denver, Alec, the plus-minus is pretty much absurd for both teams. It is. But what's crazy to me about Denver is about Jack Devine being as their top scorer on the team. He's a seventh-round pick for the Florida Panthers in 2022. But it helps playing on a line that has Tristan Rose, who's a second-round pick. A seventh round pick, but yet you got 27 goals, 29 assists, and 56 points in a plus 29. How does that work? <laughs> I mean, not bad for a seventh round pick. No doubt about it. Again, you kind of think about scouting. It's gotten a lot better nowadays, but there are players that can bounce out of anywhere and make an impact. This, this is now near the right side dot. This will be with Denver. This is good physicality here for the Eagles. They kind of jammed a couple of them in a wall phone booth. And the right side down, it emerges loose. That's a good save for Fowler. There was traffic all out in front. Yeah, and you, you want to mention scouting. Well, how about Joe Pavelski, a former seventh-round pick, drafted 205 overall in all three with the Sharks. But now the scouting's got it, got better. We wonder how many seventh-round picks can be absolute steals. We could look at the line as one of them. Yeah, I think you nailed it on that. I'm glad you mentioned that. I think about some late picks as well when you think about uh, 
like Datsuk or Jamie Benn on the Dallas Stars, very deep in the draft. Sometimes you find those diamonds. And again, as you referenced, I think Jack Devine, from what he's done right now, again, it's not a small program. <laughs> this is Denver on this side. So I mean, you got to think he's going to do pretty well. This will be lofted in toward the goal. And this will be sticked away by Fowler. Again, we saw Fowler a little bit on the Team USA side, even though Trey Augustine got a lot of time on Michigan State. But he's a, done very well in goal. One timer goes just wide near the right side red line. And Boston College able to escape the danger. So they'll flip it down. Shots on goal are 2 nothing, but the near misses, you honestly could say about five or six, either on both sides. Again, we see Rangers Islanders final score. Rangers end up picking up the extra point there with a 3 2. Islanders do get a point, so we'll see how that shapes up in the Metro. Now near the left side boards. This would be an opportunity one more time for Denver to get it out of their own end. Off the half spin, this is a great pass, and Fowler able to brush it away with the stick as it's sent in deep. Denver doing some excellent work like the Panthers do in behind the net, just trying to box this puck in and send Boston College all the way around the horn. That's what they got right now. As This will be Fortis you having to watch. This will be spun back around the end boards now for the right side dot, back to deep. Excellent puck movement here for Denver, but they can't get any shots just yet. This will be funneled in the right side boards now as the Eagles try to go ahead and find it with the stick. Drop it. Trying to go ahead and pick it up now, number nine, on the side for the Eagles, as this is finally recollected off the backhand. Honestly, Alec, that almost looked like a power play, but it just didn't materialize any shots. But it does look like it because Denver, they've been constantly pressuring Boston College in their own zone, forcing them into tight defensive battles and truly mm -hmm. getting that support the first time in this tournament. Yeah, they have. They've been continually, as Alec said, keeping this puck around, trying to make something happen with the vulcanized rubber, but both teams, to their credit, have been doing a good job keeping it outside. Here's a bad turnover off the backhand, and Fowler able to say no with the stick. As now Denver has it again. Boston College has got to be getting exhausted, as this is now near the left side end board, still trying to chase this thing. This goes back to D, and now mercifully, here's a bounce right in the middle, as this will be Boston College. They're going to try to race the other way. Davis will fall on the puck. And that is something that really needed to happen on the other end. And this is something they, that Boston College needed. I felt they were continually getting forced back deep into their own zone and getting into uncomfortable situations. I say getting truly tested for the first time. I meant to say that Quinnipiac tested them for the first time in this tournament, but now Boston College are getting tested for the second time in yeah. this tournament. So. I excuse myself for the mistake that I made because going to be that was a 4 4 overtime battle. And BC snuck away with that both team win. But still, Denver is basically just reminiscent of that Quinnipiac game early on. Yeah, and no fault of your own. I know exactly what you meant on that side. I would kind of be leaning the same way. And it is a surprise to me because Quinnipiac, again, defending national champion, we watched them over the last couple seasons, and it felt like. I know it's different with the portals and everything else, just like you have in NCAA football, but for college hockey as well, you have so many extended seniors of advanced age and experience. But for them to go down kind of tells you how good both of these quality programs are between Boston College and Denver. And honestly, as we thought probably going in, these are probably the two best teams, not only because they're left, but probably the two best teams since the tournament started. And they have. I mean, Denver, they've been winning any of the close games. Even though they're low scoring, they know how to make things tight. They're going to make these teams uncomfortable and put them into situations that they don't like. Kind of like what Quinnipiac did against Boston College, albeit it was more higher scoring. Yeah, and again, a lot of the ones that you referenced there for Denver in the tournament, a lot of those have been 2-1 results. Some of them have been an OT, double OT. They know how to win some close games. So even though I would give the advantage a little bit to the Eagles, it's kind of where I lean personally from what I've seen, been able to watch them a little bit more, especially from the Team USA side of it. If you can win close games, I always equate that to the NHL playoffs, Alec. You know how to win any type of game because the pressure, you don't mind it. Yeah, kind of like the Florida Panthers last year when they were getting continually tested mm -hmm. by the three teams that they beat. Yeah, you thought about all that. I mean, you had uh, 
four one goal games between the Carolina Panthers and the Eastern Conference. Games. So, well, oh uh, yeah, we do get you, get you, get you can poke out of that. Well, Carolina Hurricanes, Carolina Panthers. I mean, sometimes when you think Florida and Carolina, the, the term Panthers can be one thing or another. Yes, it can. <laughs> so. Yeah. Denver and Boston College still tied at nothing here with 12.47 left to go on the first. Again, there's going to be a lot to do today, so we will give you some updates per usual. I don't know if I'm going to have another about four and a half hours side of the cast, but we'll make sure that we get this entire game in because I feel like it's going to stay close all the way through, and we'll try to give you updates across the board. As this is another Denver four check. We'll have this and near the right side. This will go back to Dean take a – Beautiful bounce as this will get knocked away from Barron's. Here's a break opportunity for the Eagles and a good save for Davis. He made that look easy. Oh, oh, oh. what a save, Matt Davis. So, times, I was thinking, what does all the confusion mean that I have internally in my head between him and Henry Davis? This is just a turd. Matt Davis has been a great wall of the kid games for this tournament. I can't believe it. No, I can't either. And a great block out in front there. I think that might have been Eamon Powell, maybe even Fortescue. They got a piece of that off a of one-timer. That stopped Fowler from having to make a save. But as you referenced there for Davis, and my eyes kind of popped out of my skull a little bit because when you think about his playoff numbers here going to the tournament, his save percentage, Alec, is above 970. Yeah, he's 10-1 heading into the, the national championship game as well. Absolutely crazy. I mean, that is as clean of a breakaway as you could possibly get, and no space. Davis didn't flinch, nothing else like that, even off the back skate. Again, he just brushed that right aside like it was nothing. So scoring chances, two apiece, still scoreless. We've had some superb goaltending so far, as this is now near the right side. And keep in mind, the shots have been very limited, but the ones that have been there – have been either one-timers in front or breakaways. This is played in off the backhand now. William trying to go ahead and get a piece of it. This is a scramble toward the net, and this is some serious cross-checking going on. It'll finally fall back to Fowler, but Modka, Gasol, everybody else getting into it. They were getting awfully close to the net line. I mean, so you, you're expecting this physicality show early, even after the window, but Denver already with six shots on goal to BC's one. That one by... Will Smith off the breakaway is the first actual shot on goal. And this is too much for BC to handle at this current moment, it seems, by how much pressure is getting put on them. Yeah, I'm impressed. I mean, I understand how good Denver is. I understand national title a couple seasons ago, and they're already back two times in three years. But you just don't see the Eagles get pressed like this. But that really tells you how good the Pioneers are. And again, no slouch between either one, but I just love their forecheck right now in this period, especially as this is recollected here for BC. I'll take an outstretch pass. It's a good one near the left side wing, trying to keep it alive off the forehand now, but Denver with the press and the pin near the boards. This will be to the right side. This will go too far for Gus's and quick chance in front of the net, and Davis able to stop that with the left side post. That was not an easy save. And now Denver, able to emerge. They're going to take this chip in off the glass now. Here's a good body contact. Denver able to stay at their feet. And now here's the forecheck again near the right side wall off an outreach stick. This is picked up now for the Pioneers. And have to take a hit. And between the blue line, between the Eagles, they were taking some changes. So they finished off a couple hits nonetheless. And now the Eagles will go ahead and Settle this one back down as Benson will send us. Here's a sweet play between the legs off the toe drag. Now a slap shot, and this one goes too far. Matt Davis doesn't have to save it. And now all of a sudden, now like we're starting to see the skill showcase itself. Here we are. I mean, Boston College is turning up at the right time with their skills showcasing, just like what the American Quartet did in the World Juniors. Remember Will Smith's breakaway? Mm -hmm. No stop. How about it? 9.45 left to go in this first, a good stutter step and the high slot. As this will be sent back in off the backhand, and we'll just try to see if Boston College can get some sustained offensive zone time. I feel like it's been a lot less. Again, I don't have the numbers officially in front of me, but from what your eyeballs are watching right now, 
it does feel like Denver is having the advantage in this period so far as we're halfway through the opener. Nothing, nothing, still your score. John here alongside Alec Navas. We're checking out the Frozen Four Championship. And then we'll be giving you NHL updates as it goes across. Near the right side here is a chance that goes off the embankment. And this will be a battle puck here for BC. They'll get this back across for neutral, and they'll start it again for Fortescue. He's got this one now, and I'll flip it down. Shots on goal are 6-1. to one. So that definitely kind of predicates what we've been talking about. We might get a commercial break here. Might need one. I mean, Boston College needs one especially. Yeah, it really has been that way, Alec. And again, I, I said openly that I've been surprised about it. I think I'll continue to be. I, I do expect the Pioneers to get a pushback, but kind of wonder, I think their first intermission discussion, Alec, and I'll throw the obvious out there, whether the score line ends up still being scoreless after one. How do we survive the forecheck that's being provided on us by Denver? That's where Greg Brown has to make the adjustments. Even though he's in his second year as a head coach of BC, this is where the adjustments have to come in. Put up some new strategies around it. How do you survive such a ferocious board check? I, I'd be wondering that same question around. And if I am the Colorado Avalanche and the Winnipeg Jets heading into that first round series, because that was, they being the Kraken 3 1, a goal and two assists for Miro to Hero. Yeah, and again, from what you talked about there for Seattle in that final, that tells you that Dallas has the first seed locked up. So it's going to be a battle here between Winnipeg and Colorado to see who gets home ice. And that was one heck of a statement today for the Jets. So as, as it stands, now that Winnipeg, they're going to get the second seed at this current moment. Mm -hmm. If these two were to tie at the same amount of points, Winnipeg holds tiebreaker on regulation wins as of right now. That is good to note right now on that side. You're correct. And then when you think about the head-to-head -head matchup as well, but first, as you said, it goes through wins and regulation. And that could be very important because there was a point. I wouldn't say that Winnipeg was going to fall out of the playoffs. They'd already clinched, Alec. But when I mean, they had a chance to get the first seed, they fell down to three. And Nashville was almost charging so much, he thought Winnipeg might go into a wild card spot. But looks like they might end up with the two seed. Not deja vu of last year. And for the Rangers, well, it is a shootout victory. How about Martin Karen and Benny Trocek? Two or three of the Rangers in the shootout. The Islanders going all for the shootout. For all the goal scoring that Brock Nelson has done, it's not enough. Here's a chance for Perot toward the net. And this one now is able to be survived. Again, they mentioned, I saw a tweet go across the board that Vinny Trocek and Andrew Kopp were the same amount of uh, annual average value. And you had to pick one or the other. They chose Trocek over Cop, And that probably was a good thing for the Rangers. As this is set now around the end boards. And this will get a chance to get picked up here for BC. As Minnington line is out there on defense. This will be dropped toward the right side. And here's a good poke check here for Denver. The defensive intensity has been really good on both sides. But the four check so far as BC goes off sides. That's been of note. 808 left to go on this first. I feel discipline has been an issue for BC in this tournament. For one part, I feel Denver did a good job of forcing that offside as they lock down defensively. But BC has to be more aware of their surroundings and not enter too early. I agree with you. Again, you have a team with so much skill and speed. Sometimes that can be hard to do. But when you have that freshman line, as you talked about, you just get in and then you let the play absorb itself and figure it out because you know these guys are so skilled they will you just got to be able to get in the zone and get it started so it's a good point by you this is near the right side let's be a lofted pass here's a chance it'll go just wide of fowler's net and around the end boards now picked up here for denver this is off the pin and now bc starting to find a way here's gasso off the flip trying to get around bullion and spun back around the end boards now just to see if Boston College can take this latter half of the period and kind of push it the other way because Denver, they've been pulling on that rubber band, and at some point you'd think it'd have to snap as this is near the right side. Now recollected here for the Eagles off the steal. This is a good one off the backhand now in the middle of a line change as Boston College try to get this one now. So send it around the end boards. 
picked up now off the forehand, as this is now the Eagles. Send this one down deep, Matt Davis. And the butterfly is keeping his head on a swivel right now, as this is what Denver is trying to get out of their own zone. Eagles intercept. Here's a fire toward the net. This goes wide of Davis's crease. Here's that left side post. I'm recollected by BC. Again, they're going to go right to left. And the rest of this period here between the white and the little maroon jersey on the side of the pants. As Hershchik will send this one back down across. That's the third line here, Mitten and Hershchik, as this will be sent down. Davis will watch as this is near the right side. And this will be sent in here for Denver. Denver now. With Joyce will get this one flipped down the ice. And as this will be recollected off the forehand, off the half spin. And now the Eagles maybe can push this one right to left. Here's a full speed entry right through the left side wing off the drop, trying to set up defense here, cross pass. Too hard off the inboards, trying to set up the defenseman, a pinch near the right dot. And this will be settled back down off the flip. Boston College gets the steal across the neutral zone and fires it in. Cutter Gauthier, NCAA tournament, three goals, three assists, six points so far. He was prominent for Team USA. And you know, between the rest of the line, we talk about Perot, Smith, and Leonard, that they're dangerous. Stick gets taken out of the hands as the puck goes out of play. 552. All right. Standings check. Currently it's the Panthers and Sabres 2-2. Two, two. The Panthers are one point behind the Bruins right now, but the Bruins after tonight, they still have a game in hand. This is game 81 mm -hmm. for the Panthers. The Bruins are playing game 80. So the Panthers, they can jump ahead for the moment, but do remember the Bruins and Penguins at 8. Alex Zedeljevic will be the starter. So I feel it might be Overused, I was pointed out last time around for the Delcomic, which I'm starting to get a little concerned. It's a nice straight start. Is there anything wrong before I jump into the play by play with Tristan Jari or Mike Sullivan, as you said, that he's just going with the Delcomic? I think it, I feel it's not, not about writing the hot hand. I think he's just going with the Delcomic because mm -hmm. of set hot run. But I feel if you're getting hot at, at for one moment, it could run out, which I feel. In my opinion, you've got to start Jari here. Get him some confidence. I think so too, Al, because when you think about it, you said the playoffs start another week here. That means you're going to be playing every other day once the playoffs start. And if Adelkovic is already getting burned on both ends like that, you got to be careful, especially because I think Tristan Jari, he's got that experience as we've talked about. So I'd feel comfortable with either one. 7-4 shots on goal here. Denver's got the advantage of it. Boston College have been trying to get some of this offense going here. Schamberger, this one gets knocked away from him. This is intercepted now by BC. Here's a toe drag a couple times. Denver is astute on their defense, and they'll fire this back down across mid-ice. But there's starting to be a lot of steals here for the Eagles. Be able to get this right at center ice and then fire it in consistently. Now the Eagles starting to get a little bit of a pushback as they finish up a couple of hits. This will be in the left side red line now. Turned over again by Denver and then fired in. So neutral zone battle has not been kind, but... Boston College hasn't do much, has been able to do much after that, as this is near the right side of the wall off the chip and chase. Denver trying to enter in a baseball-style swing out of the air. This one will go wide for Fowler, but there's all sorts of traffic in front of his crease. This is now off the back pass again. BC Eagles, nice play behind their own end to get everything set. And the jersey's in white. We'll flip it down one more time for Matt Davis. He'll take an outstretch. This almost hit the forward in stride. And this will be iced against the Pioneers. You know, one player to watch here for BC, especially is Cutter Gauthier. He has three goals and three assists for the first three games of this tournament. That's two points per game. That's outstanding for this young gun for the Ducks. And again, we talk about it 38, 27, 65, and a plus 22 for Gauthier. Again, only seven points away from Will Smith with a top spot there for BC. But again, all of the numbers have been outlandish. You got guys bowl over 60 points, 70 points. It's been a mix. It's been a high octane offense for both squads. And again, you have two juggernauts here in this type of matchup. I think you would expect a little bit that this game could stay close all the way through. Try to buy time until you get one. Boston College off the faceoff. They had puck possession for a moment. Denver. Try to chip this one. This one will go out of play. This will be no penalty, but 352 in the first. And speaking of penalties, well, I feel it's going to get ugly in the Lightning Capitals game because Nick Jensen had to be carried off a stretcher after a big hit by Mikey Eastermont. I, 
I, I bet Tom Wilson may want to answer the bell at some point. Oh okay? boy. This time around, he has every right to do so. Well, hopefully we'll get a chance to give you an update on that, but that's not good. Again, as Alec mentioned, they showed the injury. I'm looking on ESPN. It's officially delayed with the Nick Jansen update that you've just given us there. So, yeah, I imagine it's going to get ugly, especially this time of year. And there really is no need for things like that, especially at this time. And, hey, if the Caps did find a way to get in, they'd be a defenseman down because Jansen has been one of those guys that have been in a solid top four role, so they would miss him. Yeah, you're, you're really going to have to have his services, especially now that he's primarily playing with Rasmus Sandin mm-hmm. as his defensive partner. And now that he's him up, I, I don't know how the response is going to be, but I imagine that it has to be thrown. I bet Tom Wilson's going to answer the bell. They're going to add a minute and 31 seconds into the second period. They have just called off the first. Okay, so we'll add that in there after. I think that's probably good because it's going to let tensions die down a little bit, as Alex referring to, because I agree with him. I think they made the right call, but it doesn't necessarily mean that any of that stuff's going to get uh, wiped away. I just hope our thoughts will be with Nick Jensen, hope that he can return, and hope that he's uh, healthy coming down the stretch because if the Caps get in, they'll need him, but if not, at least for next season. Yeah, the Caps need him for his services. He's been one of those good secondary defensemen for them. I feel he's one of the better ones. And for right-handed defensemen, the Caps are in good hands with right-handed defensemen between John Carlson and Nick Jensen. They got a nice left-shot left, left defenseman in Sandin, as well as is already mentioned. But we need to monitor this game because this is perhaps going to get a lot more ugly. Yeah, and again, not to mention this, as you said, in between the standings check for Washington, they're still in the midst of a playoff hunt. And Erasmus Sandin, I think they're trying to get him back before the playoffs start as well, so they've been beat up on that blue line. 3.52 left to go in this first. It'll be a neutral zone draw. This one won by the Pioneers, and they'll try to take this left to right here. The jersey's in red. For the rest of this period here, try to go left to right as this is intercepted by D.C., put back around the end boards now, as this will be an opportunity for the Eagles to get settled. Again, shots have been a little bit hard to come by between both of these squads, 7-4 to four right now, with 325 left to go in this opener. We're still scoreless. Here's a steal for Fortescue. Fortescue and even Paul on that top line, as this will be now near the right side dot, put in around the end boards, as this will be Near the right, now off the forehand. This will go D to D off the chip. And the Eagles still trying to work, keep on the outside. Good work there for the Pioneers as they'll force a steal. Get this across the fours and four logo and dump it in. Fowler will watch. He won't play this with the stake. We'll let the defense get this in behind the net. 2.50 left to go here. In this scoreless first, winner's going to win it all here between Denver and Boston College. So we'll see what ends up happening. We can get some goals as this is now near the right side boards, but probably the way this game is going, I think Alec and I probably expected this year. 13th national championship appearance and nine titles. There's Divine, not able to get to the puck now. And off of forehand, this would be BC. Put this in around the net, and then we'll have to get started again. Eagles off the rush, it's a two-on-one, and this will be icing against Boston College. Oh, one of the worst feelings in hockey is icing <laughs> off a this pass mm-hmm. behind the red line at the center. That's one of the worst feelings that you can get because you want to get more chances towards the attacking zone and you just miss a pass. That just feels brutal. Yeah, especially right off the rush. You got full speed. You feel like you use all that effort and then you can't change. So you're going to be exhausted on the other end. 220 left to go on the first draw. I hear alongside Ella Fnab, but we'll definitely switch off. And in the second period, again, he's more professional than I am, but we're definitely going to go ahead and flip him between this game and go all the way across the board because I've been looking forward to this matchup. I understand Thursday was a little bit of punishment for me on both sides, but this is the match I wanted to watch. Look out over there. Flipping puck bounces off a stick. It ricocheted into the crowd. Well, someone's coming home with that puck. Get to skate home with that national championship puck. Get some hockey sticks. Go on the roll. Practice and show off your skills. Congratulations, fellow. Yeah, you definitely get the uh, emblematic on that side of that puck as well. Hopefully, you can get a chance to get that sign a little bit too. Get a little commemoration here 
being in St. Paul and Excel Energy Center, home of the Minnesota Wild. As they're showing right now on the NBA ticker, Victor Wimbanyama is not going to play the final game, but man, 3.6 blocks per game. My goodness, for Victor. Ridiculous. As this is near the right side, here's a chance. Good save for Davis. This goes off his left pad. A chance in tight. And now Denver gets the steal. They're going to go for a loft right down the middle. This won't be a bad one near the right side boards, but love to get around through a couple punishments. As this will bounce up a couple sticks, Gauthier. Here's a chance, and this will go high and off the netting. 129 left to go in the first. Yeah, maybe it's small some openings, but that's a smart shot by Carter Gauthier. Far side, you mm -hmm. want to beat, beat the goaltender off the far side. Find the small holes. Catch him by surprise. Use some of the goaltender's teammates, in this case Matt Davis, as a screen. Try to manipulate them into thinking that, you do, that he, he is not seeing you. And Alec, I agree completely because, look, there has not been a lot of space. You use those screens, but anytime you get these chances off the rush, I feel like if you're Denver or Boston College, you have to take it immediately because the space just hasn't been there otherwise. No, it hasn't. I mean, it's very hard to find for either one. Boston College and Denver, yeah, they're going at it, but I feel Denver more so than BC, but as it relates to BC. So now, and near the right side boards, Denver will take this long flip, and now BC, as Alec mentioned, they'll pick this one up now. Fortescue, here's a good steal, and now Denver able to flip it in off the backhand. So there really hasn't been a lot to take between these two teams right now. It's been pretty even across the board, as we've had that late push from the Eagles. They'll try to get this now near the left side duck. This up will flip, and now body contact will Get this in near the right side blue line. We'll be settled back down for the Pioneers. About 40 seconds left to go in this first. Here's an outstretched pass. This will be sent back down around the end boards. Fowler goes ahead and plays it. Denver off the wraparound. They get canceled off nicely there by first check. We'll send this one across the third line defense for Minton in as they'll pick it up now. And near the right side boards, here's a long wrist for this one. We'll get blocked before it ever hits Matt Davis. Down to 18 seconds in the scoreless period. Maybe Denver gets one more rush. Two on three. Drop press there for Maximo Rizzo trying to make a play. And his backhand gets shoveled aside. BC, good sauce pass. Chancing off the rush. They go for a slap off the end boards. Good block. And that's going to end the first scoreless after one. And Perot with a light hit. And now we get some fists. I know they're wearing cages in college hockey, but it's still going to hurt when you punch it. Even if they're wearing cages, this is where the, the physicality can also get intensified. Even when you try to swing a punch, it still will hurt regardless. But good final end for Boston College, at the very least, to end on this first period. Exactly what they needed if they want to get going and to beat out this Denver defense. Because they've been playing tight, not only in the defensive zone, but also early on, Denver put BC under duress. That's impressive. Yes, it was, Alec. I completely agree. That was a good push there for the Eagles because it looked like in that first half when you and I were talking throughout the game, it looked a little one-sided as far as the pressure. But BC comes back and answers a little bit of tit for tat in this uh, first period, but we're scoreless. I'm going to go ahead just in this intermission here. We only got a minute in between the Flyers and the Devils, but I'll flip that one on. And then we'll try to give you any look across the scoreboard and the standings check because in about another hour or so, Alec, Things are going to start to get busy in the NHL. We're going to get a fully loaded schedule going, and we still have meaningful games for both of our teams. Yeah, yeah the Penguins and the Bruins at TPT Pace Arena, the Red Wings and the Maple Leafs at Scotiabank Arena, and the, the latter game that we mentioned, that's coming up in less than a half an hour, 20 minutes, at, at Eastern time, 7 o'clock, as we're looking around there. Whoa, oh, the Red Wings, this is a game that they must win. Yeah. Even if it's at Toronto, this is a game they must win. Alec, I agree that it's a must win. I think this is where I'm going to lean. And I probably have no right to say this because the Red Wings haven't shown it as they've been faltering down the stretch. But you got three games left. you got the Leafs today, and then you got a back-to-back -back Monday, Tuesday. We'll see where my schedule is going to lie with that because I might even lean with the Penguins on Wednesday, depending on if that's going to finish off. But I think the Wings... 
find a way to clutch up enough. They won't get all six points. I think they'll lose in overtime today, but they're going to win back-to-back games against Montreal, as tough as it is to do. I think the Wings will take five out of the next six. Again, I have no right to say that, considering what we've seen, but they'll make it close, and it will come down to game 82. Am I crazy? No, I don't think you're crazy. I think this is realistic. I do the, the main place. Yeah, they're in a good position as of now. I mean, first spot in the Atlantic, not the worst thing in the world. But Detroit, I feel they're in a position where they need to get more get more action, get more of the wheels going, the wing wheel going, shall mm-hmm. we say. And, Tor- and Toronto with at least a point, that's a good start. Make the least uncomfortable. Test their depth like how they've been tested throughout the season. And against Montreal, those are easily winnable games. And I feel Detroit is going to take care of business with the rebuilding Canadians. Okay, so we're right in lockstep with that. Again, maybe it could be four out of six most likely if they lose to the Maple Leafs and then win the next two. I feel like five is going to be needed because, honestly, we talked about the Penguins. you got the Bruins today, you got Nashville, and then you got the Islanders. We've also talked about the Penguins in the stretch of getting points against teams like Carolina, Colorado. Toronto. They've been playing very well down the stretch. So you can look at it on the outside of the hourglass outlook and say, well, the Penguins are probably losing one of these games because of their schedule. That's not for certain because they've been beating teams. They've been hot down the stretch. They're 8 0 3 in their last stretch. And, and that, that's the most important part, which means that I have to say, if I had to say this, if we do get a point against the Bruins, mm-hmm. I'd be leaving happy here. So I don't expect to win, but. At least the point would satisfy me. So you're kind of thinking the same thing that I am. So let's just go ahead and break it down. What do you think in between uh, Nashville and the New York Islanders? Do you still think Pittsburgh might end up with five out of six too? It's realistic. Okay, because that's kind of where I'm thinking too. And if if the Penguins hold five out of six, that means that they're going to go ahead and claim WC2 unless we get some kind of all-world pressure here from the Caps, but I, I don't think the Caps are going to be one of those teams that I would go ahead and pick. I think they're going to be out. I think the last two teams realistically, you know, like I, I'll say it again, the last two teams realistically that I think that are going to get the spot are either Pittsburgh or Detroit. I feel it's down to those two before the last two. The Islanders are kind of questionable in my opinion, but hot goaltending and a hot Brock Nelson, Matt Barzell, Bo Horvat is basically leading the way for them. Their depth might not be there, and I'm not all too confident in the Islanders on the defensive side. It's been a down year for them. I'm going to go ahead and look because I didn't have this in front of me, but now that you brought it up with the Islanders, I kind of just assumed that they might already have a flap spot, but that's not the case considering. So you got New York, again, the 3-2 shootout loss that you just referenced, but on Monday it's New Jersey, and then Wednesday is Pittsburgh. And that Wednesday game – that could be very interesting and maybe one of the reasons why I think I have to jump on it as well because that might determine what playoff spot the Metro is open or who else gets in in the WC2 spot. I feel the Wednesday game may be the one that we have to watch for yeah. the Penguins and Islanders and what could decide both of our seasons by that point. So I think I'm going to go ahead, Alec, I'm going to pencil in Wednesday at the 7.15, pretty much puck drop there, Eastern for me, 6.15 for you. So... I'll pencil that in, and then I'll probably do one of the Canadians games for the Red Wings just to see. I don't want to do both because it would be the same team, but we'll see. Because I also have templates to get to for the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs to do those eight. And the following week is going to be totally busy. I only got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday open. The rest of it will all be assignments. So next week will be our time to check out the last set of NHL circumstances for playoffs, maybe even catch a play in, and then I hopefully – we can get maybe a Saturday, Sunday, maybe NHL playoff game. Yeah, maybe, well, perhaps if it is Suns Lakers, then that may be the one to watch. The Lakers they've exactly done good in the playoff. They, they're two and zero with playing action and going for three and zero. Plus, if it's LeBron and KD, I like that matchup. Yeah, I'm going to have to jump in with you on the NBA plane on that side, too. So there's going to be a lot to talk about. We'll probably send a text back and forth to kind of get everything ironed out. I think the only thing set in stone for Alec and I right now next week will be Wednesday. 
there for Pittsburgh and the New York Islanders. I feel like we're going to jump on that one because it's going to decide everything here possibly on that Wednesday. There are some matchups that we feel like at least by today will be set in stone so I can start to get some of the templates ready to go as far as who is already seated where. But this has been a pretty good season for 23-24 NHL as far as seedings and everything else going across. I know you wanted to mention the Arizona Coyotes as well, Alec. Did you have any other information? I know we've been hearing that they're going to be going to Salt Lake City, but I also heard a couple other things that maybe some of the minor league teams aren't joining. I feel for Arizona going to Salt Lake City, personally, I have mixed opinions. I understand the move because the Coyotes, financially, this is not the best possible position for them going from owner to owner. Jerry Moyes, Steve Ellman, and then you have Andrew Barraway after the NHL itself took over. There were even discussions of having Jim Ball silly purchase the team, which is perhaps nightmarish for any team that would have the team relocated to Hamilton with, with his intention. I, I feel it would not be a working out nicely at that point. But Alex Maruello possibly getting the Coyotes 2.0 after the current Coyotes get moved to Salt Lake City with a completely new team for the Coyotes. I don't have any hopes that it would last in that situation. I don't disagree. I just I find it very interesting to your point where you're talking about Murillo and I'm looking at it and like, okay, they got a lot of money. They're going to move everything over to Salt Lake City. It made a lot of sense. It sounded like that was going to happen. They'll be sharing the arena with the Utah Jazz for the most part. But the most interesting thing to me, again, is for what's put in perspective. You got Wilkes-Barre Scranton for the AHL for Pittsburgh. You got the Grand Rapids Griffins for Detroit. So for the Coyotes and their affiliate, what the NHL essentially is doing is they're moving the Coyotes, but the rest of their other teams and the affiliates, they can feel free to go back to expansion in Arizona and start again whenever that does happen. Now, Gary Bettman had mentioned in between the Seattle Kraken and the Vegas Golden Knights that expansion probably won't happen, and I'm just ballparking here, sometime between anywhere closer between 2030. So that really stinks because I think that there's a lot of hockey crazies out there in Arizona, a lot of passionate that really wanted it. But as Alec and I mentioned from a couple days ago, it comes down to the shoveling of ownership, the shoveling of arenas being owned by the NHL, never really getting plans in place, kind of trying to keep it alive on life support. But yet, Alec, the Arizona Coyotes, Phoenix Coyotes have kind of moved, switched logos, changed teams, things like that, kind of figuring out where they're going to go once the Jets and then back to the Jets and all that fiasco. When it comes down to it, the Coyotes have been handled like a grenade with the pin that's already been pulled. It feels like you're playing grenade hot potato. And, yeah. And when the moment the announcement has been made about the move to Salt Lake City, well, the, the team isn't admitting it just yet because the, the players have been already told that the team is moving. But if we're going to save the date, April 17th is their last ever game in Arizona. Man, that just really seems like the ball was dropped. Again, we, we both agree on that, but it's been since what, Alec? Like 1997 for the Coyotes? Again, I remember playing Angel 97 on the Sega Genesis and having them be an expansion team. So it's really been that long. And, man, you got 20, what, seven years rough math of just – utter incompetence of as far as running the team and not for the Coyotes and the players. I think that they've done everything right. All the staff and everything else has done everything right. But between the NHLs and the owners and all of that, that's just been a giant headache. It has. It's been a headache for the players who have to witness this, the fans have to witness this, even hockey adults have to witness this. Mm -hmm. Fans who are not even fans of the Coyotes who are witnessing this. It's just a gigantic headache. For everyone involved, the tenure of the Coyotes, this entire thing has been a huge black eye on the NHL. Unfortunately, I think it's going to leave a nurse stain on Gary Bettman's insistence for a long time to keep the Coyotes from basically being kicked and beaten down. No playoff appearances outside the COVID year. Since 2012, the team bleeding money. 
Right. And all of the arena fiasco, they were locked out of their own arena. Yes. They didn't even pay their hotel bills. Yeah, I remember that story. I'm glad that you brought that up as well because I was probably thinking about that. But, yeah. You really think about, okay, is this realistic? This sounds made up. No, it's realistic. That's the history of the Coyotes. All that stuff has been documented. You can go ahead and look that up. I've watched a lot of those videos as well. The, the history of the Coyotes is not very good. And, again, when you think about, and I, I'm not making the same comparison, but when you talked about the Quebec Nordiques and then going to the Colorado Avalanche, that was kind of mismanaged in Canada a little bit in a totally different situation. But the level of incompetency from the Arizona side of it, Phoenix, has been really, really bad. And here's the salt in the wound for me. In a couple of years, let's say it all gets situated. If you start to see, and I don't think it's going to happen, but let's just say you start to see high-profile free agents land in Salt Lake City. If I'm a fan in Phoenix and Arizona, I'm going to be really upset because with all the stuff that you talked about, with uh, bills not being paid, I mean, Alec, let's be honest. The only way you're getting players there is through the draft. So if you see guys in Salt Lake City sign, I'd be a little upset. Yeah, Logan Cooley, for example, he's now, he plays rookie year in Arizona. Now he's on his way over to Salt Lake City for a sophomore season, most yeah. likely. It, I, I, I don't know how the players will react. I don't know how the fans will react, but most of the people in Arizona are upset because of the entire situation. Bad interest dwindled down. And, and now you have this exact same situation in which, well, if you remember the time when the Atlanta Thrashers got relocated to Winnipeg, I felt that Atlanta fans, they were upset about it. But Winnipeg fans, on the other hand, they were thrilled to see the second coming of the Jets. I think Salt Lake City may be thrilled to have a hockey team at their area. Yeah, Alec, because from everything that we talked about from what I saw, too, Salt Lake City apparently has been asking Gary Bettman and the Utah Jazz ownership for years, hey, so we're going to get a team, right? I'm going to throw you a bucket load of money and you're going to get us a team, right? That's kind of been the conversation over the last three years. And then finally, that's the way that ended up happening. But I agree with Alec Nava. It's kind of been a stain on everything else there for the Coyotes and the rest of their fans and even for Gary Bettman. Yeah, you can say you don't like the way that Vegas and Seattle has been handled and what they've been given. But that might kind of put a little bit of a Band-Aid on it because I, I, I agree with you. They're not going to forget about how Gary Bettman handled the Coyotes, and that's not good. I hope at some point it goes back to Arizona again. Yeah, because if you can say again, I may be saying it like a broken record saying it, but had it not been for the Coyotes, we wouldn't see Austin Matthews or Matthew Kachuk or Brady Kachuk in the NHL. Having hockey in Arizona at health matters to expand the game. Hell, we won't even see Arizona State University have a hockey program if it weren't for the Coyotes. Right. No, all those points are well taken. I completely agree with you. I'll have you settled here if you want to take this second period, my friend, and jump in. We've got a scoreless game still in front of us after 20 minutes. We're going to get set for the next uh, 40 here, and uh, I'm enjoying this matchup so far. Yeah, I'll go ahead and take the second period right here from this spot, John. How about it? Go ahead, my friend. So here we are, second period. <clears throat> so cool. Here's Boston College in the white jerseys. They have the maroon and the metallic gold as their other colors on the uniforms. They are the, the designated home team as the higher seed. Denver is wearing in the road red jerseys with the gold as we get an early whistle just eight seconds in. But still, so this is very tight. We have not had a single score. Alex Nava, John Ott, here with you. So Tristan Bros, again, he was the start of that face-off on the side of it. He's already scored a couple key goals there. You talk about a Pittsburgh Penguins product. I like what I've seen from him. We'll see who gets the first one today. Yeah, he and Jack Devine have been the one-two punch. Quite the front for the Pioneers. They know how to attack ferociously. This is quite a defensive game, a four-tracking battle that I've seen so far. And honestly, if you had a chance in a best of three or best of five, I don't know if anyone would beat either one of these two teams. Yeah, this is, uh, if this is a best of five, yeah, you can say these two are going to give you a beating of all sorts. Austin College goes inside, moving around through the far corner. Two players are down, going down at the same time like bowling pins. Call that as a five of ten pins, perhaps. <laughs> Not a strike, not a spare, just five of ten pins. Well, essentially, but two of ten pins at this current moment. Five of ten, it, this gets even more towards it. Not a full ten. Long shot goes wide. The Eagles pick this one up. Can't clear. The Pioneers hold it. And Jacob Fowler, windmill save on the 24 of Denver, Karen Cibrian. Uh, that 
was some ridiculous body contact that we got just a few seconds ago. I know Alex a little bit ahead of me there, but man, oh man, this is going to be fun. And I want to point out about Cyprian. That was a, a smart shot, even though there was a Boston College defender from in tight, going glove side, far side, that was earlier mentioned. So we'll see. I think on this side, I think you're about 25 seconds ahead of me here, a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and flip my feed momentarily, see if I can catch up to you a little bit. All right. Boston College gets this one out. They're moving it up to the near side. This is Leonard. And this one went over. The whistle wasn't blown because it appeared that it went out of play. Now they're seeing that it is out of play. So we'll get a whistle a minute 16 in. I'm just flipping back over here on the ESPN Plus side, so go ahead and take it away from me for a minute. Yeah, so we're getting a flashback over to the National Semifinal when Sean Barron threw that big hit on Mack with Celebrini. That was vicious. Yeah, there has been a lot of contact there for Mack with Celebrini. I think he also got a Hobie Baker as well, and he's going to be the top pick here in the NHL most likely. Yeah, perhaps being the number one pick. Artem Levshinov, some said that he's the number two on mock drafts. The, this electric defender from Michigan State as this puck goes out of play again. That whistle just took 16 seconds until, the, well, right after that other whistle. So pucks continuing to go out of play, and there are some battles. It was a good shot there for Lennon near the right side. All sorts of traffic in front, so I knew what he was going for, trying to catch Davis off guard there. So Denver and BC, we're still scoreless. We, at this moment, we wonder if someone is going to break this scoreless deadlock. I mean, on the women's side last year, both Ohio State and Wisconsin, they were both scoreless until the third period where Wisconsin scored the only goal. Alec, you might be referencing something that could come into action between Denver and BC here because I'm right there with you. I think there's been good give and take on both sides. Both teams have pulled on the rope here. And it really doesn't look like we're going to see anything breaking the deadlock anytime soon. And as I mentioned, that there's another save by Jacob Fowler that, that came from the top of the right circle. So, no, we still are scoreless. That shot taken from 28 of Denver, C. William. Good long wrister there, just trying to get a chance to get the space. And, again, as I referenced in the first period alongside Alec, like I think most of these teams – when you get a chance off the rush because the defense has been so good, you're just taking the first shot that you see and hope that you can get some rebounds. That is the plan here. Got this base up. That's going to be taken by Aiden Thompson. Or not Aiden Thompson. Yeah, it is Aiden Thompson, the 7 of Denver. He's a forward. But it's Boston College disrupting that plan entirely. They go back the other way. Long shot. Rebound. That's caught by Matt Davis. And just gets held on a trapper. The red light went off for some reason. There is no goal, but I feel they're signaling stop to play. 17.57 left. So, again, you're going to get this as I'm just seeing the face off now, but right in off the rush, there was a couple rebounds, and Matt Davis on the second opportunity, he made that glove save look a little too easy there as he caught that right from Armstrong's chance. I mean, that's flashing the letter right on cue for Matt Davis, 35. I can definitely see Alec why he's got a 970 save percentage in this tournament. I understand a big rebound off the stick save, but, I mean, that glove save there, no problem. There was kind of traffic that buzzed the tower there, and Matt Davis, he just looks like a pretty solid goaltender. Yeah, he's a junior, so we wonder if he's going to be – if he could be possibly draft eligible at one year. We can discuss that. But unless anything happens, Davis is doing a solid job in possibly making his case for a possible draft pick. I've seen Cole, Boston College wins the fuck race. It is Lucas Gustafson who forced an offensive zone face off. That's good work there on the other side. And we mentioned for Davis, again, I'm looking at it. I know what some scouts will say. Hey, you're playing with a great defense behind you, and everyone's had a great plus minus in this and that. Well, I look at it, Alec, the same way I think other people should. When you get into the NCAA basketball tournament, NCAA hockey tournament, and big games, I want to see how these players play in big games and whether they stay poised. That's where I put my draft stock into. Such as the case for Donovan Klingon of UConn, who is now projected right. top five pick in the NBA draft. 
Again, when we covered them a couple seasons ago, you kind of saw that promise, but you move all the way to the top five. That's good work there for the young man. And he had uh, his hands full there with Zach Eady. Yeah, as a defensive player. Some are saying that he's a Rudy Gobert type, which is high praise, given that Gobert is, has a reputation for one of the best defensive players in the league. Gasso botched a handoff. Denver picks it up. Going back the other way. No two on one. Boston College saw that pass to Gobert. And they go back the other way. Gasso can't receive this. He'll try it again and send this one back. The Eagles set this one up right here by their own bench. Pass too far. No entry, but it's held in. One shot is kicked out by Davis. No rebound. It's over the far side of the wall. And his pass was to go all the way. No be sent back over. Fowler fought about it. But it will be now picked up by Venetian. Venetian over to Breschick. The lefty. Now up for it is Leonard. Leonard charging down the lane for the near side. Eight fires. Matt Davis holds his own. Taking that to his check. 16-29. Man, that slapper that we just got just before that for Cutter Goche had some serious heat on it. Just missing that left side post there for Davis. So probably one of the better chances of the game for the Eagles as we get a good save in off the rush from Leonard. Now, we know about brothers on the same team. Well, Boston University has a trio of brothers on the same team, but Denver, they have the Bullion brothers, Z and Shea. And again, Shea, you talk about it for a Red Wings prospect, but for Z, 49 points. So you can't mess with either one on defense, and also they can put the puck in the back of the net. And he's draft eligible this year, just as Fowler makes one save. Here's Z. He moves spins around, can't get any room as Fowler makes another save. Boston College can't get this one out, and they still can't get it out. Now they fire down the distance, but they might ice this unintentionally. And yes, they do. First one, there was Z. Try to absolve the pressure at least a little bit, as there was a couple good saves there for Jacob Fowler with the left pad. So now we're starting to see some give and take here for the Pioneers. And we'll see if that continues as they're starting to get some shots on goal because I feel like Matt Davis, just a little bit here, Alec, has been the busier of the two netminders. And yeah, a last shot by Reeder Lawrence at this left dot. I mean, that was perfect placement. Mm -hmm. As a lefty, usually a righty would see that as a money shot. Normally, Alex Ovechkin, Steven Stamkos, or Mika Zibanejad on power plays in the NHL. Jack Eichel, you can also make a case. Just as more the Eagles gets bumped, and we speak of Eagles, well, I feel Johnny Gaudreau may be somewhere watching this game, perhaps given that he's watching his former er, college team. But just ahead of what the Columbus Blue Jackets take on the Predators, and there is one of the Pioneers who gets heavily knocked down. That does not look good, and he is hurting. Ouch. There's a penalty. Again, I just got a big hit before, though, the drop of a stick, and I'll probably get this one now. As man, oh man, that was a blast into the right side boards. And that has to be called, and it will, as Alec mentioned. But that is a rough and tumble hit, and that was kind of dirty. And boarding, they say, they're going to review if this is two or five. Webster very slow to get up. And hopefully he is okay because he just took a massive shot, McCain Webster as he got slammed into the boards. Mike Posma's going to the box. We'll have to wait and see if this is two or five. My initial gut tells me this may be five, yeah. given the way that Posma, I feel, did he leap his feet before making contact with McCain Webster? Very close to leaving his feet, Alec, but I would say the standard boarding call that you and I know, when you got your number in the back turn, and I really didn't see uh, Posma have any intent to stop either on the hit. So Webster's going to the locker room. He'll be checked for further evaluation. Wow. But the way that he was down on his knees, I think he's, he's favoring his facial area. Perhaps could this be a little concussion or something? We're not speculating on injuries uh, by any sort, but I don't want to speculate. But if this is a concussion, this is bad. It is bad, Alec, because honestly, that contact that I just able to see off the replay again, that's about as about as dangerous as any hit you see in the NHL. Yeah, the same for play, you just want to pin your opponent onto the boards. Pogba yes. did the opposite, and so Denver's going to their first power play. How do you do the Frozen Four? They rank 16, but Boston College, they have the best penalty kill in the nation. Denver went over in the Frozen Four against Boston University, and they still pulled out the win. 
Yeah, we'll see because now the power play is going to be very big, as you mentioned there. And both these teams haven't really seen a difference yet, but Denver's got a big opportunity here. And the Thompson ran out of room to shoot, and now they'll reset. It drops back over the ground to Shea William, who I think it is, or is that Rizzo? I can't see a clear jersey number. This is Rizzo. At the far side, it's sent towards and back over to Rizzo. First game back from injury. Sent over to the right circle. Denver holding at that side. All the way back over to Barrett's. Barrett's fighting Rizzo again. Rizzo, turn his slot. Soft shot. Easily turned aside by Fowler. Thompson holds it, but not for long. Boston College can't get it out, but this pass for Denver doesn't work. A minute left on the power play. Boston College can't get it out, but Denver erroneously sends it out off the attacking zone. They're going to regroup. Set back in by Thompson. What would be on his side? And Boston College jumps the lane. They clear it down. And it all went wrong with that errant pass. Yeah, it did. They had a couple chances to be able to set up across the circles, but again, as we talk about, sometimes get a little too cute there. I need to get some shots here on Fowler. So far, it's not been a lot of shots. Tristan Rose thought about steady this point up. Now sent across. Boston College did a good job of blocking that pass out. 25 on the power play. Far side. One timer. And one of the Eagles fell down trying to block that shot. They do clear it out. I think it was a flopped shot. 15 seconds left. On the power play, and Zay Fulham has it, sends it up deep. Ten seconds to go on the power play. They're holding at the far side, tied up by two Eagles. Five seconds, and another clear. That may be the last one that BC needed, and it's going to get them back to even strength. Mike Posma back on the ice. Just one shot on that power play. You need more dose if you're Denver. The BC's penalty kill is so ferocious to their credit, and that's another one of their successful kills. BC moving it up through the middle, and they pick it up on the attacking zone. No room to shoot. Now behind the net. Denver has it again. They clear out the center. They can't send this one in. BC all over this puck at neutral ice. Sent inside by Karen Cibrian. Now sent out by BC all the way to center. They move back inside. Drop pass. Go take. Over to Gasso. Gasso kind of at the far corner. Now jumping on this puck. It is Lucas Gustafson. Can't get anything out of it. BC big hit along the near corner. Now back inside. Cibrian. Cibrian over the far side. One timer. This went wide of the net. Just missed Fowler. Not by much, though. But the Pioneers have to reach that. Capote will send this through. This goes around, but this one sent its tie from behind the red line. It is an icing. So shots on goal are 13 to 8 on that previous power play. Tristan Bro is able to get the entry. And as Alec mentioned, one time we're falling down blocking a shot for BC. And again, their penalty kill, which is best in the nation, is almost sitting at 90%. And again, that's kind of why they made it look a little bit too easy as they were able to keep Denver stationary really on the outside. We got another look there as that was a great block off the instep. And that one's certainly going to hurt. You know, it's Aiden Gretschuk, number seven for Boston College, taking that shot. He was certainly banged up, trying to look, blocking that shot on the penalty kill. They're the only team among the Frozen Four teams with, with an over 85% penalty kill. The others have not even cracked 80%. Denver says it's out. This may be back-to-back -back icing. What race it is. So, Alec, again, this is just me talking out loud here, but when you have a unit that is that strong, I understand you get some really high-quality recruits for these two programs, but you also, I think, have to give a lot of credit to the coaching staff, don't you? Because those numbers are outlandish. Yeah, Greg Brown is a defensive mastermind. Let's not forget about that. Back in his day, he was an assistant to his predecessor. Yeah, absolutely crazy. And again, for these two teams, as far as – Everything that they can do offensively, you think that's where Boston College is going to have the advantage. It showcased itself, and honestly, Postma, I think, was pretty fortunate to not get at least a double minor, even a major. Fortunate, fortunate for Postma not getting a major penalty normally because those types of penalties may warrant major penalties if the injury is severe. So, Denver, they send this back around, and Jacob Fowler jumps on it, and it was bouncing right in front of his crease. That was a wild sequence. There was one Denver player looking to pounce if there was an opportunity to capitalize, but no such opportunity to do so. That was divine right in front of him. 11.37 to go, and finally, we get a TV timeout. 
Yeah, that was pretty close there in off the clear. And again, the one thing of note that flashed across the screen, I'll throw that out there. Denver does have a clear advantage in one area so far as follow who's got that license plate mask. It never seems to make me laugh. 21 to 9 on draws are the pioneers right now in this game. So we'll see if that starts to bear fruit at some point. So I want to get to another game that's happening tonight. The Canucks and the Oilers, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. Here's the interesting part. No Connor McDavid for the Oilers. Just for rest reasons, hopefully? Perhaps, maybe. If the Oilers, if, if the standings hold up right now, they'd be facing the Kings for the first straight year. But the Kings, I feel they want to avoid deja vu. I feel seven of eight teams may be... He may be going on a deep, could have potential to go on a deep playoff run. I just feel that the Kings may be the odd man out. Kings have been one of those teams, Alec, and it goes way before the season even started with the PLD trade. I understand you've had some excellent push there for Quentin Byfield, and I'm glad that he's really kind of got his feet wet. And Anze Kopitar has been excellent per usual, but I just don't know about team chemistry and everything else or whether or not they can get it done. And, hey, let's just say this. If Edmonton's already beaten the L.A. Kings, as you said, over the last couple, and I've covered some of those as well, what makes them feel like they can't beat them three straight years? If they feel like they're locked in that matchup, get some rest and uh, figure it out when it starts in about another week. Yeah, yeah, not to mention that Vegas is right on L.A. tail. Mm -hmm. So if Vegas pounces them, then I feel we're maybe getting a Oilers Knights first-round series. I feel the Oilers, if, if they're facing the Kings – they're, they're winning that series. If they're facing the Golden Knights, I feel this one's going to be more tighter than expected. But I feel the Golden Knights, they can either win, go deep or flame out early. I feel Vegas, they have the highest ceiling, the lowest floor. I agree completely. And maybe from what we talked about there from McDavid, and I'm looking at the standings as well, and I'm getting to that realization that you just gave me. Maybe if you're the Oilers, maybe you have a uh, – Day that the Jets had against the Avalanche, where you give up seven and you really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> the downside when he has, they may have to start the row, basically. Yeah, and again, that could be a downside for them because the Ball Arena, they've been excellent. But for the Oilers, again, as you mentioned, they might not even care where they are in the standings. They might just take it easy today. We'll see what ends up happening against the Canucks. So back on the way here. Oh, BC may have narrowly avoided an offside, but Denver has it. 11-17, this is Santa Cross, now it's 11 15 Shots on goal are Denver 13, BC day, but it feels like it's been all BC since the second half of that first period. One of the Eagles gets dumped. They get back up on their feet at the far corner. They can't move it up. And the Pioneers send this one all the way down. Bowers right there is one thing down. The Eagles now over the, the near side is Gauthier. Gauthier moves this one up and taken up by EOB. Some excellent chances there. You talk about Matt Davis been sitting on his head for a couple of these, and BC now starting to hum a little bit. I feel like they've recovered from that earlier first Alec that we talked about, and now they're starting to get some chances right in off the rush and setups as well. just go back to it because I'm about to see this in real time. Matt Davis with a couple excellent saves and a lofted bounce will go to the right side in off the rush. That was a great call by Alec. Again, that's something that I wouldn't have even expected 
And again, that doubles down those big saves for Davis, doesn't it? Because now Denver's got the lead. My goodness. Huh. And worst possible goal for Boston College <laughs> to allow a wacky bounce off Jacob Bauer off the post, off his back, going in the net. This goal will be credited to sixth round pick Jared Wright of the LA Kings. Wow, Jared Wright was certainly living right, wasn't he, Alec? Right in off the post, right in off the back. I mean, that was a heck of a shot, but it took a double doink and then went in the right side of the match. Uh, don't get Chicago Bears fans. <laughs> I'm not talking about Cody Parkey. Oh, no. That was wrong. And a shot kicked out by Fowler. I feel you have to shake that goal off him. This wasn't his fault by no, no. means, but you got to feel for the guy. What, what, what more can you do when you see a puck go off the post, off your back, and it's in the net? There's just nothing that you can do. No, Alec, and it also tells me, too, that you think about the NHL margins in space. Well, these guys in the NCAA are pretty damn good, too. When they see that opening, they'll take a shot, and they can likely score. Uh, they'll take any shot they, they take it. When there's an opening, Powell sets one in front. There is nothing there. And Denver, I think they're going to slow it down and just send his tie, which they do so. And moving around is Thompson. Thompson can't wrap this one around as one well of the Eagles was on his face at Ambrosio, 11. Moving around to the near side. They keep this one in. Down and around in the air corner. Several Eagles there. Free up up. They take it away. They move it up to the far side. They clear it out. And Denver back with a nice take by Z. William. He skates this one in over the far side. Kept in front. Bowers secures him 850. And he'll cover it and hold on to it for our next commercial break. Denver, one nothing. Jared Wright, the only goal off the wacky bounce. Yes, it was. And it was a good chance near the left side dot as well. He took the lane that was open to him, and that's pretty much what you have to do. They mentioned this before we jump into break. Denver has only lost four games all year when they've had the lead after two periods. So. That is what Boston College has in front of them. And we know for Boston College as well, we'll just give you the record be set 34-5-1, 23-1 in their league. So they're not scared of the situation. Greg Brown's going to have them prepared. But let's just be honest, Alec. Is somebody going to get, get, get a goal past Matt Davis? Well, something's got to give, in my opinion. Again, his save percentage, we talk about over 970 now when they last checked it at 974 for this tournament. So that is robot level like, and we'll see if Boston College can find a way because let's just be honest, if Denver gets an opportunity to get a power play here and Boston College already killed one of them, but if they get another and maybe convert and you give Davis a two-goal lead, even for as good as Boston College is right now, that could spell disaster. If you go Boston College, they, they could, they may need to get the wheels moving once they have the puck and pick this one up now from their own end to the offensive end. If you get a two on one, that's your best opportunity. Yeah, and I agree. It's just all about whether you can actually initiate those two on ones because both of these teams have really kind of locked it down defensively. We saw a lot of the first period, especially, was a neutral zone battle between the two. And these are elite defensive units. And, again, as I talk about going into this tournament, we've covered some of it, Alec, and you've covered more of it a little bit than I have in the regular season. You've seen Macklin, Sal Brady, and some of these other teams. But Boston College and Denver, are these the two best teams that you've watched all year? Well, I haven't watched most of I haven't watched Denver for the season. But for mm -hmm. play, in the pros and four, they have the impression that they are, they may be the second-best team behind Boston College. I feel Boston University – as good as they were in the regular season, they may actually have been the third best team behind Denver. I, I'm going to agree with you completely from what I saw because I kind of stand in the same light that you are as far as the amount of coverage. I, this is what I've seen from what we've watched, and I've enjoyed it so far. It's been a really good game. And I don't think either one of these teams are going to be outmatched, but it, the next goal is going to be big, and I think BC's got to get it. Oh, this may be an ice game. Matt Davis was calling for it. Might have took a wacky bounce off the boards and right down through behind the goal line. Denver gets an offensive zone face off. It didn't look like much, though, but they called it. So I want to see this now. And, yeah, that honestly, Alec, there was really nothing there to differentiate that. So 
Maybe a fortunate call for one team and not so fortunate for the other. Maybe in that situation. Now the Eagles off this face off. They take it up. Looking to move it down and tie this game up. Gustafson sends it deep. And that was from beyond the red line. So legal entry. Poked away once by the Eagles. They chase this down and track it. Benson sends it over to the near side. We're standing there. Smith right across. This goes above letter. Letter matched by two pioneers. And back the other way is free on free entry. They have all five players in the attacking zone now, but the Pioneers can't get much of that. Gustafson around for the far side, stop the lane, but nobody there. I see again. The first one to them, and to that point, is Cyprian. Smith tried to make something happen off the bank pass. That didn't work too much there for BC. But again, when you talk about it, Gabe Perot, Will Smith, Ryan Leonard, Cutter Gauthier, the rest of this team is pretty good, but, I mean, you know those four names. You know them well, Alec, on the offensive side. they got to start uh, driving the bus here. Yeah, you need these four to drive this team, just like how they drove USA to that gold medal mm -hmm. victory over Sweden 6-2. Not afraid to play the build role, and they lived up to that in the World Juniors, just as Jacob Fowler makes it Thursday. They have prospects for the Montreal Canadiens. Right behind Kane and Primo along their promising goaltender prospects. This takes a wacky bounce and all the way down, so no icing, because it took the bounce right in front of the red line. Denver sends it in. Boston College picks it back up. Initiate a cross for Restrup. Restrup looking for the left side. Now sent in by the Eagles all the way down to behind Davis's crease. Scooted out by Denver, but it's held in for the moment by Venetian. Now at the near corner, moved around by Connor Joyce. At the far side. Boston College can hold it. Here come the Pioneers. On a breakaway. One on one. What a save by Jacob Fowler. A stone of it. Left pad save. Kicked it out as this goes out of play. 6.58 to go. Fowler keeps this one nothing. So I'm about to see this now. This is a great steal across the right side blow line. And a forehand, backhand, forehand chance. Fowler doesn't give the shooter any space to work with whatsoever. So we've already seen Davis and Fowler with breakaway stops look easy. And guess who was that? It's a goal scorer, Jared Wright, taking that shot. Hey, that's only fair and that's only right, my friend, correct? Because he's already oh. got one. Go ahead. Oh, and we almost saw another one of those wacky goals. That took a wild bounce off the defender, but it's just scooted wide. We almost saw another one of those, John. I'm about to get that as well, so don't let me step on your toes. So Denver, they're back in the attacking zone, held in by the 21, 28, the seed William. Now it's over the far side. There is no number 20 on Denver. Long shot. That was blocked in front. Oh, Thompson got twisted and turned over the far corner. And that was another Pioneer. So the two Pioneers are down. They get back up. No major damage done. Skated back in by Sean Barris. Barris can't hold the puck. Now he's, oh, wrestled down by Breastchuck. Over the far corner, this is turning into a wrestling match over the, the Boston College side of the ice. My goodness, this is intense as Denver takes it back in. And it comes in back inside. Fowler shuts him down, denies it with a glove save. 557. Well, the great wall, Fowler, we saw that sign. He's starting to percolate a little bit here. He's trying to answer everything that Davis has been doing. And I've seen a lot of physicality here, Alec, between these two. Even in off the entries, and that's an excellent save off the rush. My goodness. Yeah, Aiden Thompson. Aiden Thompson, followed by Jared Wright. And that <clears> reverse <throat> order from that Jacob Bauer. No problem dealing with our breakaways. It's just that one wacky goal that was a difference. Yeah, that's all we've had right now. Both these goaltenders look to be on their A game. Yeah, yeah I can't really put that as a goal against Bauer. We shouldn't. But unfortunately, the stats as that's going to show it, but in our, our hearts, it, it should not. Now, Divide goes to that. He's been shy with thus far, along with the rest of his first line, but Tristan Bros has both of Denver's overtime winners in this tournament. One in you against double overtime, one against UMass in double overtime, the other against Boston University in the first overtime. Backhanded to hold this one in, but Boston College has it. They're looking to tie this one up. It's a one up the game. Right has the first goal. Moved around to the far side. The Eagles had trouble holding it. They were changing. Now up the other way are the Pioneers. For the far side, that shot didn't go through. And 
we'll get some help and clearing this one out. Denver back with this. 450 to go. Nice crossover by Lee William. He skates his one in. C. Double team. Open shot. Score! Denver! 2 nothing. It is Rieger Lawrence! Man, oh man. I didn't think Boston College was going to be on the ropes. I know there's tons of time here, Alec. That's a great skate there for Bulliam. Is there get a chance now to drop the left out? And what a snipe! Right in off of that pass. What a gorgeous goal. And nice set up by Z. Just to find the open. Lorenz all low in the left circle. And just enough space. Top left corner. The smallest hole that he can find when it was just enough to beat Fowler. I mean... For Fowler, that's like trying to shoot the puck in through a Cheerio. And then somehow uh, Denver is able to score those. I mean, there's not a lot of space above that shoulder. Those are two pretty good snipes. Uh, it's, it's looking similar to those small holes in which NHL was able to find mm -hmm. and able to be, be able to be goaltenders. Those are small holes. can be effective, though. And these NCAA players are going to have to take those once they get to the NHL. There's a save by Davis, a kick save that was, that was driven out by Charlie Letty, number four for Boston College. Pioneers back with this. They own a 2 0 lead. They shoot this right off Bowler, who kicks it out. That was Barris taking the shot. Now behind it, that picked up by Leonard. Leonard wearing the number nine for BC. Spins around, picks down a Pioneer. Now set through. And over to the right side, here comes Moreau. Moreau, nice spot's over. Go to that! And he collides with Davis. Davis is all right, but Moreau is shoved again. And I believe Webster and Barrett are taking exception to it, and then everyone comes across one another after the whistle. Again, Webster, he was the one that got sandwiched in there initially. Oh, what a toe drag. It has absolutely gets shoved a couple times. If you see anything else, take it away. And Perot, honestly, he got a little late uh, stick chop there at one of the legs that was not caught. But, man, that was a car crash up in the air. Perot went. Davis able to stop that couple late hits there. On that side for Barons against Perot, we go to break, and uh, tensions are starting to boil over. But we speak of tensions, well, there's a lot of tension over that Northwest division in the NBA. And the tiebreaker goes like this. OKC, Minnesota, Denver. So if OKC wins, they get the West, then the Northwest, and the West first seed. Minnesota wins, OKC loses, then the West goes to Minnesota. Denver wins, the other two lose, the West goes to Denver, at least in the regular season. That is a lot to digest. What we can tell you, though, between those three teams, regardless of where it goes, I think all of us, you and me, Alec, would be leaning for those three teams to win their first round matchup, correct? And we would. No, the one team, if I'm the Thunder, that I would not face in the first round would be the Lakers. Realistically, if the Lakers are facing the Thunder, that's a matchup I could see LA win. But if I'm LA, I would not want to draw either Minnesota or Denver. Those are bad matchups. I'd be interested about Minnesota because, again, I haven't followed them as astutely, but I'll, I'll take your word for it. But for Denver, absolutely not. I think that would be a repeat of what we saw in the Western Conference Finals. Yeah, yeah Minnesota, they, for as good as they are offensively with Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns, they are a force defensively, perhaps the best defensive team in the NBA. That is something, Alec, that I'm going to have to keep my eye on and learn, uh, learn a little bit as I go across this playoff side. So I'll look forward to it and keep an eye on it. And, and, and we also got a three-way tie beforehand between Sacramento, Golden State, and the Lakers. The order is Sacramento, Golden State, and L.A. But currently, the Lakers have the eighth seed, better record than the Kings and the Warriors. They win, they get the eight. If New Orleans wins, but Phoenix wins, then it's New Orleans, Phoenix, L.A. drops down to either nine or ten, depending on the outcomes of the Sacramento and Golden State games. 3.48 to go as we get back in action. BC at the attack end, down by two. Long shot, no tip in front by Andre Gasseau. That was Gauthier taking a shot. It's at the far side. Gauthier keeps this one in. It's around down low, moved in front by Gasseau. Gasseau, long shot, that missed the net. And falling down, I believe, was Gauthier. What tried to wrap this one around? Denver did not like that. It's a foot race to it. It is an icing. Boston College, offense is on base up. 
Got to find something here, Alec. Again, I would just go out to say with 3.30 thereabouts left in the second as you get all that action on top of you, Boston College got a score in this period to me if they want to get back into it. It's a must score, nonetheless, whether it be this period or the next. But this, most certainly. That's just where I'm leaning at. Like, I mean, I understand they could get three goals in the third period and make them look good, but Denver's done a great job defensively against this Eagles team. And there's another face-off play. They've been good at the face-off dot today, and they're continuing to do so, dominating the majority of the face-off. Perot can't hold it. It's Denver clearing this one out, and it's returned over to Aaron Manishian. Manishian from the D.C. bench over to the Red Circus kick for the back. Now along for the open Manishian. This is BC. They've averaged 31.8 shots per game on the season, but this game they've been held to just 11 shots. This masterful Wolfert by David Carl, the head coach of Team USA. He knows that the, the American quartet from his day was the World Juniors, and he is against the plan to shut them down. That shot stopped by Fowler's glove save on Jack Devine, but it looks like Carl had the blueprint. To, to get to the American quartet of Boston College. I'm glad you said that, Alec, because you're right. Again, I didn't really think about that in the back of my mind, even covering those games in NHL Network. But, yeah, you saw their tendencies throughout the practice. You know exactly what they want to do. And it's always good to have an inside edge, not to mention he's probably a really good coach. Yeah, perhaps the best coach in the NCAA at, at the western side, beyond the Mississippi River in the east. <clears throat> Davis now he's got a two goal lead BC had a chance in off the rush again I thought that they had to score in this period to be able to keep this a game still looks like they might only be down two but how many more times and again you said it during your play by play and I give you credit how many more times is Denver going to allow Boston College to get any shooting opportunities because it really just seems like they're, they can't even touch the puck at times and it feels that way not even touching the puck at all it feels that way because of how they play defensively. The, the looks are there, but no matter what happens, it feels like Boston College is playing five on six and Denver has an extra defender to their advantage at the Denver and the ice. We're going to look at the uh, trophy, and that looks pretty good, Alec. Denver might have it in another 20 minutes. Lake hit just after Fowler covered the puck. 
blocked, but not by any intention of Cyprian, who just accidentally touched Fowler, which causes a minor skirmish. You're going to get that anytime someone gets brushed from the goaltender, but that was completely just an accidental type of thing, as you said. So 13.04 in the second, Massimo Rizzo. Again, you mentioned his name as well. I'll go through his numbers as I have it on front of me. 29 games played. He's just come back from the injury in his second game. 10 goals, 34 assists, 44 points, and a plus 24. So welcome him to the lineup. And by the way, the Buffalo Sabres and the Florida Panthers are playing in overtime right now. It is 2-2. But now we have Denver trying to get a scoring look off the face off their seven that position. They won't get one. Ten seconds to go. Boston College. Flips it down over to the Denver zone, bounced up a player, then off the stanchion. But it goes out to center. Will Boston College get one last shot out? They won't. It was blocked in front. Denver limiting Boston College heavily at the shot totals. As you take a look at the total shots on goal, I don't have it with me, but I am on the live updates on the NCAA website. The shots on goal, Denver 21, BC 12. It's 2 be Pioneers. That sounds exactly right, Alec. That's what my eyes tell me, too, about a two-to-one side of it between Denver and BC. Just a masterful defensive performance here through the first 40, and that is what I'm most impressed with. Look, you can understand that there's a goal off there from Jared Wright that maybe banked off the side for Fowler and off the post that's a little bit unlucky. But for Lorenz, same spot, top left corner. So maybe Denver's keying in on something that they like. But, man, oh, man, we'll see if – the Boston College Eagles can come back from it because right now I'm leaning no. It feels more and more that way. And Boston College, they've been through hell and back in this mm-hmm. game. And by the way, it is 1-1 between the Red Wings and Maple Leafs. And your guy, Alex Debrinkin, he scored. That's his 25th. That's right after Mitch Marner's power play marker. To start the scoring, it's 1-1 in Toronto. Thank you for that scoring update, Alec. I just flipped over to Buffalo and Florida. We're going to watch this OT and give you the updates as well. I will give an abbreviated part of the game story. I might try to mix that in with Toronto and Detroit as well, maybe Pittsburgh, Boston, depending how long we go. Because I do have plans tomorrow, so i got to make sure that I save the pipes and not yell too much. But 41-28 is the chances. J.J. Paterka now. We'll stop this in the left side dot. Again, we're in the three-on-three OT. Sabres have the puck, and Paterka will take his time back at Amra Bank Arena. It's not FLA Live Arena anymore. One more time, Paterka finds the entry. Here's a drop. Here's a shot for Darlene off the backboards, and now Darlene will get it back. He'll turn and shoot. Here's a good save, I hope, for Bobrovsky, not Stolarz. I don't know if the goalies are in front of me now, but this is picked up off the sauce. And settle back down for the Sabres. Florida forces to steal. Scores! The extra point, Sam Reinhardt. What a year it's been for Sam Reinhardt. And the Florida Panthers, they will get home ice advantage for their first round series in the playoffs between whoever they face between Toronto and Tampa. Well, Teddy, what we see in Toronto. If Toronto gets a, gets a win, they cannot get the three seed with an OT or shootout loss because they get more feeding room in Tampa in trying to get the own tiebreaker over Toronto. But Florida, they have home ice advantage. They'll get one of the two top spots in the Atlantic. And I think they should, Alec, all things considered, because they've played consistently. I know the beginning of the year you had those injuries. You had to deal with all that stuff for uh, – Montour, Forsling, all those guys because of the injuries against Boston in the first round last year. You thought maybe, or at least I did, that Florida would have to deal with some of those injuries, kind of take a step back. No, they've been consistent the entire year. Yeah, between Montour and Ekblad, who are mm-hmm. hard to start the year, they've been consistently good. They maneuvered around those injuries, and they are now a complete team. You get Vladimir Tarasenko at the deadline after not getting anyone to trade deadline last year. Well, it was a blessing in disguise, considering that Edwards now bought into the philosophy that Paul Maurice has brought in. Now that you have Edwards, possibly take it on another level for the Panthers. Now, home must advance. You now have expectations in your direction. You are no longer the underdog. You have everything to gain, everything to lose from here on out. I agree. And I think if you're Florida, 
The only other thing that you would want, you already know this, but I'll just say it. If you're Florida, you want to get back to the Stanley Cup Finals. I think that's your only goal right now, and then see what happens. I think anything other than that for Florida and Paul Maurice and company would be considered a failure. Um, that may be this scenario that which they want to do. Yep. So I'm looking now in between this third period, in between the bolts and the caps, we'll continue to flip back over. Obviously, we'll go back into our featured game. BC's down 2-0 to the Denver Pioneers, and as Alec and I talked about, it's just a great defensive effort here for David Carl's squad. He's been excellent through the first 40 minutes, and honestly, I said it with Alec, and again, we can split the difference a little bit. Maybe Boston College gets another goal back. Hey, they're strong enough to get three and win the game outright, but I don't see Denver loosening that lead. I feel like they're going to take this. It feels. I apologize for the background. Well, You're fine. My dad's knee, so <laughs> my mom couldn't resist his, his, his saying the Spanish version of bless you. <laughs> I always get a lot of background noise myself. It's no problem. I'm always happy to have you on the broadcast. Every time that 7 nothing score line goes across the belly bar here in this coverage for Winnipeg and Colorado, I just have to rub my eyes again. I mean, I mean what is this? I mean, we now have confirmed matchup is now a matter of who gets home ice. I mean, Colorado, you have to win both their games for a shot at home ice. And Winnipeg, if they want to secure it, one win does it. That's hard to believe to me for Colorado because I thought for the most part that Colorado was going to be able to lock that up. And I won't say that the Avalanche are in trouble. We talked about those splits 39-1 and now after that big-time blowout today at home ice at Ball Arena, but just 19-16-5 and for Colorado on the road. And they're trying to get Miko Rantanen back. I think they'll get him healthy by the side of the playoffs. They get Bell Machuskin back in the lineup as well. But there's going to be a lot of uh, pressure on Alexander Gurgiev, who has been pretty good. I feel he's been overworked at times because of Justice Onanen and some of the other backup they don't have for Rand Slows. But I feel good about Colorado, but I'm also a little bit worried in goaltending. Yeah, Bill Georgiev has been overused throughout the season. He's good at his highest. But if I'm Colorado, I would want to get a solid 1B to help out Georgiev because you have to deal with all the injuries. Two of the back of goaltenders. Pablo Franzos didn't even play a game. Ivan Prosbatov was sh- uh, sent down mm-hmm. to the AHL. And now, you have just as on and with the backup. How are you able to survive if you're a backup goaltender on that situation? I'm not sure, Al, because you're right. Because when you think about Georgiev and you're on and in, if you're on and in, I probably expect to maybe not see the goal crease unless there's a blowout against the abs in the playoffs. I think that's Jared Bednar's plan. So it's going to be Georgiev or bust. Tanner Janot with a wrist or this one stopped by Charlie Lundgren. Man, oh, man, I feel like Charlie Lundgren, win, lose, or draw here for the Caps. I don't know if he's gotten enough love this year because he's been really good. He's got himself into a nice 1B spot with the Capitals. Very kind. Darcy Kemper, who signed that five-year contract when coming to the nation's capital from a Stanley Cup in Colorado. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Lindgren is – I mean, he's obviously been the better of the two goaltenders. And for Spencer Carberry, I think he's really had no choice. He's played so well that the Caps have had to use him. And, again, we talked about their negative goal differential all the way across the board. And uh, that's why we don't know if the Caps are going to do that much if they get in, but still – Lingren's been the story as to why that they've been close. By far and away. I know we mentioned about Kyle Larson the other day with him doing a NASCAR mm-hmm. Indy car double. Well, he has been the story of NASCAR. This is his first straight pull that he's claimed for the Texas Motor Speedway race that probably could short us down as the Auto Trader 400 at Texas Motor Speedway in Fort Worth. So, the most talented driver, and we did have another photo finish this time in the Xfinity Series. Sam Mayer overrides seen by two one thousandths of a second just today. I always like watching those photo finishes, and I feel bad for anyone that has to go back and try to get it officially done because sometimes you just can't tell. I mean, it just looks so close you can't even see it, it, how close it may be. I mean, frame by frame, you go over it, and then the moment you see the front bumper cross the line first, you that's the moment you see it. That's what happened in Atlanta between 
Daniel Suarez, Ryan Blaney, and Kyle Busch. I mean, three wide photo finishes yes. are extremely rare. The only other time I ever remember seeing that, it was in a movie, the first Cars movie. <laughs> And the race he references one of those ones that I actually saw that and just this isn't common, is it? No, it's not. And again, that was absolutely crazy. And again, movie finishes into real life. It's kind of crazy how that ends up working. So I will watch the rest of this first period and then I'll flip back into our third in between BC and Denver. Detroit has just taken the lead and they've drawn a power play as Joe Valeno gets hooked by Matthew Nice. So oh, how sweet this is for, for Detroit. Two one the goal scored by Simon Edmondson, his first of the year and a Thank you. for the Red Wings. Welcome to the big leagues, young fella. Thank you. I know the injuries have been beginning of the year that kept him out of the lineup, but it makes you wonder, Alec, how was he not called up sooner? He's been one of the better Red Wings defenders since he stepped on the ice. Yeah, it was a little bizarre that he was not on the lineup earlier. I mean, let's put it this way for potential lineups. Wallman, Sider, they have Edmondson, whoever's second pairing, right shot defenseman, Mata, Gosses Bear. And for this season, if Gosses if Bear is not kept for next season, I feel right. you should, maybe you can keep Mata. He's a defensive presence. I like Mata. He doesn't ever have to do anything flashy, but he gets the job done. That's kind of what you feel like in Pittsburgh, especially, right, too, with Ole Mata? Yeah, for those Stanley Cup years, especially so. Yeah, whenever he's better with Trevor Daly or Ben yeah. Lovejoy, he's one of those guys that can get the job done on the defensive side. Not anything flashy, but he doesn't need to be. Same thing with Brian Dubal in his prime years. Right. No, I absolutely agree with you on Ole Mata. I, I feel like... That's a piece that Detroit's going to want to hold on to. Whether it's Chirot, Petrie, or Hall, I could take it or leave it, considering they haven't played that much. But I think the forefront thought, and I, you and I will agree on this, but the forefront thought is Evanson and Sider is your future number one pairing. But now it's Wallman and Sider. Yeah, so we'll see how that continues. And for Wallman... I just want to see him get back into the lineup here. Sprong, one-timer, it's in the back of the net. The Red Wings score to break it again. Oh, I need to get on to the game because this is happening. Everything is happening. And even if this is a tight battle between the Penguins and the Red Wings, what it's up to you do, maybe even the Penguins for the M3 with the Islanders, I want to see the Red Wings make the playoffs. If there's any year that the Red Wings can get it in at last, this is the year. What what a shot. What a snipe to make this a 3-1 game. Everyone celebrating in Motown. And Alex Debrinkin is one happy man. I appreciate the kind words, Alec, because I would say the same thing for you. I think the only thing that uh, you know would be fun is if that matchup on Wednesday wasn't against the Islanders, if it was Detroit and Pittsburgh again, and then whoever wins got in. <laughs> the field that way as well. Because we'll see on Tuesday, and then you and I will be watching with bated breath on Wednesday, most likely. Here's a slap shot. This one gets blocked. Then Chirot let it go. And the Red Wings are going to keep dragging me out of the abyss and back into this, it seems like. I'm just going to wait for all these 82 games and see what happens. But Alex to break it. This is a big time for a couple goals for him. Now from Raymond and Fabry and for Lucas Raymond. Alec, we could just go out and say it. I know the Red Wings have struggled for about a month and a half now, but it's not on Lucas Raymond. He's been excellent. Yeah, hat trick against the Penguins. This is no joke. In a 4.9 form as well, this is a hot run for Raymond. Indeed, that he has been showing up, stepping up when he needs them the most. And good for him to get a hat trick to propel this team further and further into the playoff race. I want to see again on the box score as it's about a minute 15 and we will flip back into our feature. And then we'll also jump into Pittsburgh and uh, Boston. I don't Alec that much. I'm looking to see if James Reimer is playing today. Indeed he is. Five out of six. Ilya Samsonov, 10 of 12. So Reimer is getting a start against his former team. Yeah, I remember when Reimer was the starter back last decade for weeks. Mm-hmm. 
Marner now off the chance, and this one's hand grenaded toward the left side. Make sure Ella gets some food. I need to get some as well. 40... Oh, oh, you got me. I know. You got me. <laughs> 40 seconds left to go on the first. Is this wrapped around the inboard? They don't blame you because I'm going to be doing that shortly. Not too long, but I will have to check in between Pittsburgh and Boston now because it's just going to invigorate me if the wings get two points. I feel like I have to jump back into this. Sometimes – the wings had made me so sad, Alec. I was kind of questioning whether or not I should still be following along on hockey. The wings have their hands in the air again. I think they scored. What is happening? Four one Anthony Marner. Oh, Anthony Marner is back. Oh, Anthony Marner is back. Oh, Anthony Marner is back. Stop. I mean, like, it ended a complete stop. There was so wow. Shots can do wonders. David Perron, he's been one of those guys over the last couple. I was wondering why he was on the first line. I still like David, but don't get me wrong. I think the first line for Detroit has got to be Larkin, Raymond, and DeBrinket. David Perron scores a big-time goal. Alex DeBrinket's getting hot. This is everything Detroit needs right now in front of a shell shock, Sheldon Keefe. It looks like it's going to be 4-1 after 1 for Detroit. We didn't expect this. No. We were thinking about possibly overtime, yeah, at least one point out of this. But you know, they're going to be a very happy man tonight. And I can already see this coming. Man, oh, man, uh, Alec. Again, Thursday was rough, and I'm glad that we got a chance to cover that Pittsburgh Detroit game, and I'm glad that she ended up getting two points, but I was feeling it after that Michigan game. I wasn't very happy. This is quite a turnaround. <laughs> uh, one point against Pittsburgh isn't the worst case no. scenario, but yeah, win here. This is big for the Red Wings. Yes, it is, and it's going to put even more pressure uh, back on the Penguins to get that win against Boston. I mean, Boston – they're still fighting technically, right, for a number one seed. So there is a lot left to do because Florida took care of their business today. <clears throat> yeah, by the way, we're getting back into this game soon enough. The last time Denver blew a two-goal lead was December 1st. The last time Boston College came back from down two goals, January 19th. So we'll see if that happens. I just flipped on myself. So good timing on all of our parts as this is now near the right side. This is with the Eagles. They'll pick this up now on the right side red line. Look to get this started again. Who is going to get the offense going for BC? Here's a rebound. This one stopped by the right pad of Davis. There's a blown twig and near the right side of the boards. Denver able to escape. They have a Carl squad. has played an exquisite 40 minutes of defense. And they've been very opportunistic when you think about Rieger Lorenz. And Jared Wright, two guys on the third line, have both those goals past Jacob Fowler. And honestly, as Alec and I said, not a lot of space to work with, but it didn't matter. The Pioneers were pretty much shooting a laser and threw a small hole and scored twice. So 13th National Championship game, nine titles. They're going to try to make it 10 right now, so that is one heck of a run. They won the National Championship just a couple seasons ago, now have entered two of the last three years. And again, the... Bruins Penguins game is going to be on ABC and ESPN Plus, and Alec and I will be watching that as well. So, this is going to be a fun Saturday night. I'm glad that you can join us on the YouTube side and the Twitter space. I know it's just Alec on, and I on that side, but a John Ryan on, on YouTube, you can always follow that along. And I know Alec's going to be doing some Twitch streams here soon, especially that'll be good timing for the Stanley Cup playoffs. I think we're getting a penalty here, Mr. Nava. And we are. It is a penalty against Denver, I believe. So initially it was bank silver shove on the six of Denver as I'm trying to get a number on that. That is McCain Webster. Well, he's been a, a target on the backs of BC. And, and David Carr was wondering, what do you do? What was the penalty? They didn't look like much, but it was there. A little bit of a stick hole after getting hit there. Webster, you're right. He was the one that took the first hit. And from uh, Mike Posma, and he's definitely going to be needing some ice bags, but maybe it won't hurt so much if they end up getting a national title. Yeah, well, I know BC, they're 5-7 in national championship games. A win here could help them. 
So BC is going to get their first power play. Denver's got a couple. And now BC, what are they going to do here? They really need this goal. This really is a must get. Here the right side. Here's a chance. Good save for Davis. And again, Alec, as he was holding on that left side post, doesn't Matt Davis just look unbothered? Hey, not really bothered. I know he was. He got knocked down in that first round game against UMass, but it didn't really hurt him that much. Got a little winded, but he fought through the pain and rallied hard. So I don't mean to say this as cliche, but some spicy pork and broccoli can help. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes, it can. When you think about Louis Domingue, and that definitely helps you. It keeps you energized as this is put around the end boards now for BC. Right to left. Good steal here for Denver on the forecheck for a moment. And the Eagles essentially going to have to kill some time, take a half spin around the end of Jacob Fowler. Get it started. The Denver penalty kill just 77%. So they are definitely vulnerable here, but in this game, it has not looked that way. 17.45, thereabouts left to go in the third. John on alongside Alec Nava. Here's a wrister. This one stopped by Davis in a massive collision of behind the net. More sticks go flying. BC, high slot, pass right dot, wide open. This gets blocked, turn shot. And this one blocked in front before it ever hit Davis. Good work there. Loose in front, back pass. Oh, what a stop by Davis. Are you kidding? This is the greatest college hockey save I've ever seen. And Matt Davis, stand up, sir. Still 35 seconds left to go on the power play. Here's an opportunity off the drop. And your best penalty killer is your goaltender. And that was miraculous backhand save. Fowler, when we get another stop at that, you can jump right in and tell me how that happened. But I can't believe it. This goes back around the left side. Eagles. Now, put it around the end boards. And I said I was going to try to keep the voice in check, but I couldn't do it there as this goes now near the right dot. Crisscross. Eagles. Got to be wondering how they're going to score against Matt Davis. Here's the cross pass. They get two shots. One of them should have went in. This goes off the backboards. Denver escapes the pressure. Man, 99 overall level goaltending for Matt Davis. The slider's all the way up. 22-15 shot board. Denver's got the lead, and it's still 2-0, but that is a save that you're going to see once the replay hits all over Sports Center tonight. Yeah, that might be the save. Third round of Rosen Ford. If Davis scores on that penalty kill, that's the Another good four check here for Denver. BC trying to get this in the offensive end. 1535 left to go in the third. I can't believe what we've just seen. It's kept this score line 2 0. BC trying to find the entry desperate right to left. Just try to get a salvo in past Davis. But right now, that 970 plus save percentage continues to climb. He's just been unbeatable. Denver off the back end. They'll find the entry across the red, clear it in. And now the Gabe Pro line is out there right now for BC, just trying to make something happen. Here's an opportunity for Pro off the one on four. Here's a wrist. This goes off the backboards. Rebound stopped by Davis, too. As this the Eagles falling down near the right side and then running into a brick wall. Denver with some elite defense cleaning out the body there. As this goes in across the blue line, this will be flipped back in and iced. And by no coincidence, the marching bands start playing thriller because this goaltender has been a thriller. This is post to post, dying deep effort. Kind of looks like the Mark andre Fleury save from a couple years back. <laughs> oh, this kid. Man, I don't blame like St. John Gucci Ross for losing his mind at saving his no. Wow, that was a big save. One of the greatest saves in tournament history. And I lost my mind, too, so I'll be right there with Bucci on that one, sliding over there, just getting a glove hand on. An absolutely unreal save has kept this a 2 nothing game. And Matt Davis, his draft stock, I have to imagine, like we talk about, that's shooting up right now 
as this is near the left side dot. Here's a good stick check in the lane off an outstretch pass, but no sir. This is picked off by the Eagles near the right side wall. And if you're Boston College, you just got to get, get more shots on net. Here's a drop. Set this one up here for Powell. Too strong off that cross pass. BC trying to keep it in. Cutter Gauthier, he absorbs a hit. BC still with it. One of the defense going to take a change. As this goes now, Fortescue set it up. Here's a wrister. This is blocked out nicely by the Pioneers. Alec, it's cleared in the players' bench, but the Pioneers have played some excellent defense in this game. And your best defender is your goaltender. It speaks wonders to how hot your goal can, can become from the start. Davis entering this tournament, this Frozen Four being 10 and 1, now heading into the championship being 10 and 1 in his last 11 games. He's riding hot, and especially this save and establishing himself as one of the greatest goaltenders, perhaps in Denver history, or maybe so. I don't know how anyone has drafted this kid, but his draft stock just improved by several positions after this save. Somebody, right. Somebody's picking him up, Alec. I'm just going to go out and say it right now. I know it's easy, but somebody's picking him up after this performance. Again, the way that he's played over the stretch, as you said, with the 10-1, Honestly, with the way he's played, I'm shocked he even has a loss. <laughs> yeah, it's more surprising that he has a loss than he has been shutting down teams left and right. More more shocking that he has a loss than how, how his team has beat Boston University and Cornell in a revenge match. More shocking than how you're winning against Boston College, who many have said are the best team in the nation. Yeah, and I agree because I've been jumping on that bandwagon here first. I think you've been more neutral than I have, and your credit to you because you're a professional. I was kind of leaning toward BC. I, I thought that they would take advantage of it, not just because of what they did against Michigan. Michigan had no chance against them, but they've looked to be a machine all year, and I keep going back to Perot, Smith, Leonard, Cutter, Gauthier, Fortescue, and uh, Jacob Fowler, and right now it's, they're down too. And here's another shocker. Washington up 3-2 on Tampa Bay. Oh, don't count them out just yet. But even more impressive about that scene, that's Ryan Leonard who we stopped. Yes. He was one of the best prospects in the NCAA entering the NHL as a member of the Washington Capitals organization. That makes this scene a lot more impressive. Extending the long arm of the wall on Ryan Leonard with an absolute highlight reel. Again, 104 out of 107, officially a 97.2 save percentage. He can't even do that in a video game. But well, you can't. Not even in NHL 24. Perhaps if you're by some miracle playing goalie goal <laughs> and playing lights out like that. And by the way, the Washington goal was scored by John Carlson, for those wondering. That was on the power play, something that the Caps have been historically good at. So we will continue to monitor that because this is giant for the Penguins and the Red Wings. The Red Wings have a 4-1 lead. In our game right now, Denver has a 2-0 lead on BC, and we're going to get a whistle. And yeah, the, the Red Wings and Maple Leafs are at the first intermission. But it has to be me. feel good for Simon Edmondson to get his first goal of the season. That's a confidence booster for the young guy. He is someone, Alec, that I have high hopes for going into 2024-2025. And the way Eisman has drafted, especially with defensemen over the years, and Sider, who went off the board, and now Edmondson, they look to be the towers that I think are going to be pretty good for Detroit going forward. My only question is, how long of a leash will it be for Derek Lalonde? We can talk about that a little bit later, though as this is now the right side, near the point, near the left dot. Good space to shoot, waiting for a spot to open. Davis doesn't give one, though. And now on the right side, Eagles. They wanted a slap shot, but good stick check will push this one back. Man, the voice actives are going up higher in this game, Alec, but it's, it's had to. This championship game has certainly lived up to the hype. Here's Leonard, who just got robbed, and now Davis gets another glove save. Well, Andre Gisela had an open look. He was looking top left. <laughs> left side just wasn't enough on the release. I feel like he might have need to elevate that a little more towards the top left corner where the chances of stopping that are a little harder. But now David has played. There's no guarantee if that shot's going to go in no. or not. No, there's not. Everything right now, if you're Boston College, Alec, all I'm doing is 
I'm funneling shots at the net, trying to get as many faceoffs as possible, and just hoping something goes in to give me an opening. Because right now, this 2 nothing score, the way Davis is playing, it kind of feels like it's four. Yeah, it does. It feels like you're doubling the lead up, and every goal may feel like two goals now by yeah. analogy. I'm glad that you agree, because that's kind of where I am right now. This is stolen. Denver. It's a three-on-two. Lofted pass. Fowler able to touch it away with the left pad. As this goes in across the wall, Denver still with it. Driving off the toe drag. Boston College just able to get this puck away. Playing nicely. Into the skates, trying to find an entry now near the right side wall. Here's opportunity, but BC gets pasted into the right side boards. We'll send this back around. D to D. Stutter step, try to elude it. The high slot now, great space. This goes off the bar and sent back down the ice. My goodness, 11.55 left to go in the third. Even when you're trying to beat Davis, the post helps him out. And this is sent back down around the inboards. Now the Pioneers. They'll make this. They'll try to take it left to right. They're in the all red against the maroon pants for Boston College in the white jerseys. Here's a feed. That bounces off near the right side dot. Back and around the end boards. Eagles, they're going to be getting desperate here, Alec. 11.30 left to go on the third. They find an entry. It bounces off Davis' stick. Flip back down, and this will go right to BC. They'll look to settle it back down as they got their third line out there right now. With Hershick, this gets turned over. Now Denver finds the entry. Long wrister. It's stopped before it ever hit Fowler right in front of the circles. BC will take a long flip and ship it in off the glass. We settle back down. No icing. Full changes here for Denver's offensive squad. And David Carl, as this one gets flipped in, stolen for a moment by BC, trying to go ahead and spin. Good reverse hit, but still can't get the puck, even through a double team, as Denver now will push the other way. Here's an absorb of a hit. Back and around the net now. Here's a turnaround chance. Here's a rebound. Picked up here. Bullion tries to make something happen. We'll make a back pass. And this will be now near the right side. Dot loose. Here are the Denver Pioneers trying to get a chance out in front of the net. And Fowler able to brush it away with a stick. 10.25. Hope to go in this third. I'm about to hand it over here to Alec when we get a stoppage because I know he's a little bit ahead of me on this feed. As this goes now near the right side wall. Here's a good drop, but it's stolen right by BC, trying to get around a high stick, no penalty called. Again, you imagine, unless there is something that is completely major, there will be no whistles at this point. This is flipped in. Now for BC, long shot. This is held. Stop right at the 10-minute mark. How perfect. I'm going to hand it right back to you. Perfectly 10 minutes. <laughs> That's such a stoppage. Well, what a coincidence where both of us stand. <clears throat> That was the time you mentioned about one harder final score. The Philadelphia Flyers with a one nothing win over the New Jersey Devils to keep their very slim playoff hopes alive. Yes, they do. And Alec, I know as slim as it is, with just one game left for them. Even if they win out, they're going to need help. And a lot of it. And since the start of March, Matt Davis has shut down 301 and on 322 shots. That is outstanding goaltending. And his best save may have came in this tournament. Coast to coast, arm save on one of the best prospects in the NCAA. And Davis is undrafted. This puck goes off the Denver boards. So TV timeout, 9.35 to go. You want to make a visit with uh, Steve Eiserman, Matt Davis, please? <laughs> oh, oh, me? So, so, somebody, one, one of us. We gotta go scout this guy to get him on the Pens or the Red Wings. Hi, Kyle Dubas, do your thing. <laughs> We're going to break. Matt Davis has been a brick wall, and we've got some goals from Lorenz and Wright on the third line for Denver. They look good right now, and they're halfway to a championship. Yeah, I'm also oh, gonna go. Little light looking of the Tampa Washington game. We're in the final five minutes of the third period here. They're showing four ten to go on the clock. So currently it is the Caps with possession, but soon enough you think that the folks are going to have to pull the big cat, Andre Vasilevsky. You would think so, Alec. Again, usually around that three minute mark is when you do it. We'll keep those updates alive. I'm looking at the box myself. So back deep is Kucherov up for point. 
point can stick with it. They can't get an entry. Now it's back with point. Try to drop it back. The extra pass is not there. Washington shut that down defensively. But Michael, uh, having a phone with Carter, Mc, whatever. <laughs> well, Carter McDavid, Carter McMichael. What's next? Carter McDonald? Carter Mc... <laughs> And so it's all the way over the board. We got Connor Bedard. We got all of them. Anybody with Connor is probably a good hockey player. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it feels like back even catch already. Good stick whip by who I believe is 73. I don't have a jersey number on 73. But on the right side is Van Reams. Like long shot, long shot, but score! Nick down! What a seal to wow. put up! The Cats lead 4 2. And the Caps, I'm just going to go ahead and project it here. If they get the points, 87. Right now the Flyers are ahead, but the Caps will go ahead because of games in hand, and then it will ultimately depend on what Pittsburgh does today. It's going to get a little bananas. And you know who else benefits from this? Toronto. Even if they're losing in their game, each team will have two games remaining. And the Lightning throw by five points behind Toronto. Yes. So Tampa's going to get WC1. Toronto's going to get the Atlantic free seed. Yeah, that's a good call by you. There is a lot still to do with the couple of games in the season. So we're now back to this game. Boston College on their backs. The last time that they have came back from down two goals was in mid-January this year, but Denver has not blown a two-goal lead since December of last year. For me, Alec, the entertainment level, I know there's not been a ton of goals, but the defensive astuteness has been excellent. Goaltending's been brilliant. This has been a really good national championship game. Especially for Denver, because they're seeking their 10th national championship in their 14th appearance. Boston College, of looking to avoid going 5-8, in national championship games, as Denver's I still 908 to go, BC offense zone face off just what they need. Yeah, you're right. And again, I, I did not expect this scoring line going in, but at least I was going to say that this game was going to be close, maybe two or one goals. At least I got that right. We're in the ballpark here. But what do you think, Alec? What does Boston College got to do here to try to get something at 908 left? Well, I see Greg Brown is mixing up his lines. He's putting game pro. And Will Smith with Oscar Yelpeak. So Yelpeak is getting elevated to the top line. He's putting Ryan Leonard with Carter Gauthier. So mixing and matching the lines. I like that. Yeah, you got to do something to jumpstart. I agree. So it's Perot on this face off. They're, they're, they're using Will Smith over the left wing side, trying to get a quick shot. And Perot wins here. Smith, he fires. Davis answers the call. 9.06 to go. Again, that's right. As you talked about, you get getting Will Smith profile in here for a backhand shot to get a chance on a floor and run up the draw. So I like those chances there for Greg Brown, and you got to continue to do something else. Throw a wrench into the plans. Try to get a goal here. So this is what they're doing. So I know Perot won the first base out this time around. He's the one being deployed as the shooter, or actually as the LB. Smith loses this base out, so those plans get disrupted pretty quickly. But we're all chasing after this puck. The Eagles hold it. That was the number eight. Gustafson holding his in, but Denver clears this one out. It's not enough for an icing as a takedown by Eamon Powell, the captain. Denver cuts away at this, but BC quickly gets it back. It's Powell over to Gustafson. Moved up front. That's Perot. Can't handle it. Y'all be trying to hold this one through, but this puck goes towards the benches with 840. Time kicking for the Eagles. Yes, it is, Alec. And again, you just wonder where that goal is going to come from. It doesn't matter. I don't even care if you get a goalie goal. Somebody from the crowd, somebody get the Eagles going here offensively. <laughs> no, it's in the crowd. Someone be dressing as an Eagle. Come on. We're talking about Bob Hodges, David Aries, Scott Foster, Jorge Alves. Mm -hmm. Anything here right now because we're seeing – the Eagles get shut down. Again, it's a 2 nothing lead, but a masterful defensive performance. And we're seeing Matt Davis turn himself into prime. Henrik Lundqvist yes. here in front of our very eyes with 8.28 to go. Yeah, he looks better than, again, Henrik Lundqvist is good. Jonathan Quick. You got Mike Richter, who has been a hero before for Team USA. He's all those guys combined into one. He looks like an absolute terminator right now. And they know that the 
Mike Richter Award is down to between Kyle McClellan and Jacob Fowler for the best goaltender in the NCAA. But Matt Davis says, if, if I'm coming back for my senior year here, I'm putting my case here at this tournament final game. Yeah, you might want to make an exception to also include playoff performances. <laughs> it, it's looking like that every passing minute was how Davis is playing. 2 1, 2 1, 2 1. Now it's 2 0. And if this is a perfect sweep of 2 1 scores, it implies Boston College is going to score one exactly one goal to break the shutout. But even doing so may be a tough task But how Davis has played. 8 16 to go in regulation. And Boston College. Desperation will maybe suddenly deal with how good Denver's play defensively. They're testing them all throughout. A BC to have nine shots in this period. None have gone by Davis. Eight minutes ago, it is finished. Jado is spun around. One of his guys was there to help him out. That's Ambrosio. Ambrosio can't find the open man, and we do get a stoppage. Some of the fans were calling for a penalty, and as Denver touches up, it appears that they're going to be the ones penalized. So we'll see what happens on the power play. Look like a little bit of a high stick to me as they got this up the initial feed. But again, the shots on goal for BC in this period, 9-4. And I'm glad that you mentioned the score lines as well because Denver, really, they have not broken out throughout this tournament scoring goals, and yet they've still found a way to win. And yeah, each one of them has been exactly two goals in each of their win, in which they scored the amount of goals. And Jack Devine, it's not by sticking, it's tripping the penalty. Yep. So Boston College is going back to the power play. So Jack Devine has not had his best game, has he? Well, it's not his best game, but given the way that Denver's played defensively and how they play in this game, they don't really need him to play his very best. Right. Yeah, it's really been a buzzsaw, honestly. You're right about that. It's anybody on that balanced line. And something's got to give here. We'll see what happens as far as a power play. BC, this is their best chance. Yeah, so it's right now it's Barrow across. This goes out of six days of play. Went off the board. Off the college. Open man is Will Smith. Set it out in front. Can't be directed on goal. Goatee going back to the point. From Powell over to Goatee again. Across for Smith. Tap backwards. Perot. No open room. Finding strong, but not enough. Goatee shot his block off the skate. That was 24. Cyprian who blocked it. This kept down low by who I believe is Perot. Now set off backwards. This goes all the way down to BC Ice. Even Powell was not there. Powell now sends this one in deep. Perot waiting for help. Sends it one across. Now it's stopped by Davis. Will Smith had a good shot. But Davis had the better say. Down low. Back at the low slide. And a one-timer. Caught by Davis. He's been on a tear, shutting out everything in that, and he just robbed Leonard again. Alec, I mean, these are good chances right in off the rush off the power play, even some toe drags as well. And Davis just continues to shut the door. And someone's going to draft him. That's all but guaranteed by this point after this performance. Yeah, I would think you have scouts lining up to his door, blowing up his phone at this point after this game. I mean, I mean, I'd imagine the LA Kings could send a scout to look at Davis and review his performances because of the goaltending situation as it looks. Say, say, hey, drive this guy, Rob Play. Here's the LB. He fires. That's why. 48 seconds on the power play. Held in by Benson. Now over the LB again. The LB across. One timer. Davis shut that one down, too. It's clear now with 40 seconds to go on the man of edge. Oh, and Fowler. There is no trapezoid rule in the NCAA, so that's not the way of game. You know, me, right across the red line. They take this one inside. That was out the stick. You know, me, right? He saved this one through. Chipped around by Denver. Held in by Benson. 
we'll get a chance to see this one in a second. Right in off the rush. This go, yeah, right in through his legs. Wide open to shoot for a goal. Yeah, that was wide open. Basically, a goal for Will Smith to be had. Now we're heading into the final five minutes, and Denver is holding on to a 2 nothing score. Well, Denver's going to have to find a way to get back into this game. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. This game is going to be Boston College starting to run out of time. He went off deflections. One time was in front. I mean, the Leonard, the Leonard and Smith chance hit him right in the face. It hit Davis right in the face, wrung his mask, and he's still able to make the save. Everything they've thrown at him, it has been the kitchen sink and then some, and they still can't buy a goal. And no, even if it was for a dollar by this point, <laughs> they can't even buy any goal right now. It's just empty handed. So the result is official. The Toronto Maple Leafs will get the free seed in the Atlantic. The Lightning are the first wild card. So that is going to be big. And again, essentially what that could mean through the rest of this is Boston and Tampa could be a first round matchup as far as what we see. Assuming the Rangers don't lose any of those side of the point totals. I don't think they will. So that could be your first round matchup, and that's going to be a good one. And by the way, congratulations, Eric Carlson, on 1,000 career games. Was Eric Carlson his 1,000 career games is tonight? It is. Okay, so his, his 999 was the slap shot winner against Detroit in OT, and now he gets to go into 1,000 games. That's a pretty lofty accomplishment. It's been a nice three days for EK65. Yes. One of the best defensemen that we have got to see in the modern NHL. For first time in Ottawa, San Jose, and Pittsburgh. His best years in Ottawa as a two-way presence. Now he's more of an offensive defenseman that he's adjusted to be. He's definitely a really good player. It kind of makes you wonder why certain other GMs didn't pull the trigger. But Dubas says, you know what? We still got our core. Let's bring in Carlson. And it's kind of crazy. You bring in Carlson and the team gets younger. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of crazy about that. Even if, if the Penguins are still the oldest team in the NHL by average age at the start, you still get younger by shipping out outright veterans like Michael Bradley, Alton, Jeff Petrie in the mix. 4 11 left to go in our game. Is Denver going to lift the trophy? Yeah, they're playing Kern Craft 400, but I imagine Denver fans could be singing to all the small things like Blink 182, just like what the Avs fans did two years ago. That would be a good one here. It would make a lot of sense. And again, the defensive presence is something that I'll remember. And Matt Davis goaltending. That's been your story here in this 2 nothing lead for the Pioneers. And how long ago? Matt Davis, three saves in about a second. Four oh, free to go as he covers. Oh, man, right in off the draw. And then a couple backhands. This guy is a machine. I mean, one save, two saves. After the initial block, is yelled deep. He was right in front. He thought he had a lane. But whenever Boston College gets a shot through to Davis, that's the 16th time they fired a shot on Davis this period alone. And I get they're frustrated, but Davis is making them frustrated. Yeah, Matt Davis kind of looks like that kid in Happy Gilmore that takes baseballs in that pitching machine, but he just looks unbothered. Oh, whistle just two seconds off the faceoff. Did we 
we have a false start or anything, or is there something else that happened? I think, Alec, we might have had a false start again. You're a little bit ahead of me, but that's what I think that we're going to get. Okay, well, both David Carr and Greg Brown are figuring out what just happened, but they're taking two seconds off the clock. And the Nick Robertson goal for Toronto is way off. Good news for me. I'm going to try not to get too happy just yet. Let's wait till this game is done. <laughs> oh, well, we have 350 to go, and David sees a long grifter for the blue line. Get to them. He'll cover up as several Boston College players get right at his feet, face on his crease. Yeah, I'm wondering, honestly, we got this latest whistle, as you said, but what was the first one about as we get the stoppage right at 349? Either way, Boston College has done what they needed to do, Alec. I think it's time. Jacob Fowler's got to go here with 349. Yeah, I don't know why PC's not pulling him for the moment. He's got to go soon. Yeah, 345, maybe you're down by two goals. Pulling him makes perfect sense in this landscape. Back deep to the suspension. Across. Boston College, desperation time. Set the back across for Benson. Long shot. Green out in front. Davis held his own. And holding on to it is Smith as he walks back over the point. Crossover around. Smith still holding the point. Long shot. Kicked out by Davis. Rebound by Banks to take the bounce off a skate. Denver has it. They want to clear. They do so. Chase for the puck. Denver's going to get to it first to wave off the ice. Tight shot. That's stopped away by Fowler on Connor Capone. Now move that team to the Denver zone. Picked up by the eight of Denver. That is Shea Boyum. Now back deep as they're both chasing after it in the BC zone. And offside against the Pioneers, it was Jared Wright who looks across. So it was BC who last touched it. Denver did not. It's unfortunate if you're Jacob Fowler on the other side because it's not like one of those goals did bank off you in the post. You got sniped essentially once, and that's going to be enough to lose this game. Jacob Fowler played well, but Boston College couldn't find their offense because Matt Davis – has been a giant amongst giants. Well, we speak of best goaltenders. We thought it would be Fowler being the consensus best goaltender, but Davis has a word on that. Yes, he does. And again, you keep telling me about the undrafted part of it. And I just, I can't believe it. You imagine every NHL team's going to chomp at the bit. Yeah, yeah even as I mentioned, the LA Kings are going to be looking at it as a goaltender situation. Goaltender needing teams will be looking at this kid to see if he can be the future of the, the franchise. He may be down at the age for conditioning sure. and for learning experiences early on. I think LA could use a guy like him. They already have Eric Portillo as one of their prospects. Having Davis wouldn't hurt either. Yeah, and Portillo, I know he played a lot at Michigan, but the way that Davis is playing, you'd think even he on the depth chart would be ahead. We get a Boston College timeout. We'll try to get everything set so we know what that's going to mean. More Perot, Smith, and Leonard. Maybe even Cutter Gauthier as the extra man as Davis getting profiled in this game as he should. Breakaway stops, multiple rebounds, and that save with the glove hand that it's heard around the world, and you're going to see that all night. Yeah, it just gets on to Sports Center's top ten. That would make everyone among the college hockey world happy men and happy women. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, one of the better ones that we've seen. So, Alec, it's time again. You got, you got to pull that goal. You got to do something here. BC needs a goal, and they probably have to score within the next minute. Yeah, they have to get too quickly because you have two fifty-nine left. Time is your enemy. It makes perfect sense that you're getting Gabe Perot back out on the ice, but you need the extra attacker. Get everyone out there. Your best players: Gauthier, Smith, Leonard, Perot. Those are your four that you're looking to key at. How about a little mix of even Powell and Drew Fortis here as yes. he was two carry to hold the line. 242 left. And here's Gauthier. Will Fowler go? He will. Extra attackers pointing out. Six on five for Boston College. They need two. And it's over at the far side. Denver looks to wrap it up. They can't clear it out. Several whacks at it. Still in play. Perot chases after it. Lose. Picked up by Gasso. Gasso. Benson went up, right circle, Davis, loose in front, it's not over the line! How did that stay 
fuck out. Get some changes because they need those changes badly. The entire players on the ice. This was almost lost. Boston College going back the other way. Move it around to the far side. Now the near corner. 125 to go. Boston College can't hold it. They do so. Uh, Denver just clears this one out. Move got around. Slowed down by BC. No empty netter here. Sends inside. I who I believe was Perot. Denver can't clear again. And Davis bounces on it. Just a joke. They got the shot up. 109 remains. And everyone cutting at each other. Man, that previous sequence there, the puck was fluttering, bouncing around in the air, does not go across the line. And again, they'll funnel this one right at Davis with 109 left, as you said, as we get some meeting of the minds. But certainly now, with 109 left, even with an empty net pull, unless they score right off the draw, this might be too little too late. It may be. So too, it may, might be too little too late for Boston College, considering he's 109 remaining. This late in the game, well, I will say they, they reversed the Nick Robertson goal, and Austin Matthews scores goal number 69, one away from 70 goals. This one goes all the way and will not get to the net as an icing against Denver 102. And so icing, and again, it's going to kill some more time. But it does give Boston College life to be able to try to win another offensive zone draw. And again, as you gave me that update on the scoreboard, my heart sank a little bit. <laughs> well, I'm kind of conflicted on the Matthews goal, considering, yeah, he has 69 goals, but it's a, but it, it kind of is demoralizing a little bit. The Red Wings need to keep the foot on the gas pedal. Last minute of regulation. Here we go. Boston College just got blocked. That was for the point. Still held in by Gokey. Gokey trying to find some room. Good stick in the lane by Denver. Gokey already sitting on the near side. Now behind the net. Pass in front. Can't get anything. 44 seconds ago. Gokey sends it over to Powell at the point. Now shot on the right side. And Davis passing on it several times. Justin Warren the Boston College Eagles gets pounded and turned down WWE style. And just isn't going to stop here for Davis until this clock is done. All sorts of traffic out in front, and he finds it again. How does he keep doing it? <laughs> I mean, there's only one explanation. This is a man possessed. And when we speak of some of the best goaltenders in the NCAA, insert Davis into the conversation, yeah. entering the senior year's return. Yeah, so quick shot that's kicked out. That was Davis making a stop. And Denver's able to get this one down the way. No icing. Denver got there first. And Boston College trying to avoid the empty netter. Something they don't want. Letter picks it up. Stick with it. He stays with it. 20 seconds to go. On the far side. Skating up for the ice. Denver in their second national championship appearance in three years. They got upset last year by the Cornell Big Red. Just as this is cleared out, this might as well do it. As Denver is the first to it for the second time in three years. The Denver Pioneers are Frozen Four Tournament Champions. Alec, what a contest that we had between these two. Davis especially, but that defensive pressure. This was a physical game. There was a lot of stick checks, a lot of battles at mid-ice as the sticks and the gloves, everything get bounced up in the air. David Carl, big hugs on that side. And I think you said it best, lock and key for David Carl as far as the Bro, Smith, Leonard, Wine. I mean, they just bottled up the Eagles. Exactly how you said. They bottled them up, especially with Carl having a game plan, given that he coached the U.S. World Junior team. He knows Leonard. He knows Smith, Poro, Joe So, a bit of a rivalry factors into this. Whether they turn pro or not, I think it's up to them. But I feel they could very well turn pro. I mean, both Logan Cooley and Matt Nyes, they turned pro after mm -hmm. they finished their freshman years at Minnesota. So they are now full-time with their clubs, but there's still the learning aspect. How would they go on with learning? Perhaps, is there a way for online classes when they're with their NHL teams? I'm sure they would get all of that situated there if they were going to be able to split their playing time. Because, again, you think about some of those names – Remember, Will Smith was the fourth pick in the draft a couple of seasons ago. And, I mean, let's say, hey, 
You know the Sharks are in a little bit of a rebuild mode. We all know that, but you're going to get a ton of playing time. You're going to be able to jump right in if you're Will Smith if they want to do that. Uh, don't get me tempted to make a Chris Rock joke, John. Well, I'm not trying to do that. We got Will Smiths in baseball. We got Will Smith, and we got everything. So it's uh, bouncing all across the board. We've had the same name game the last couple days. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I used to know someone in my college named Ryan Smith. Mm -hmm. Now we have Ryan Smith, the jazz owner, possibly purchasing the Coyotes and relocating to Salt Lake City. And several Ryan Smith's uh, hockey players and all that stuff, too. So, yes, yeah, so all same name games all the way across the board. David Carl's getting interviewed again. That's a heck of an effort. Honestly, Alec, I'm glad that we covered this one and always happy to have you with on the broadcast. But this was an excellent national championship game. And I think the two teams that were to meet for it today and play against each other, these were the two teams that should have played against each other because this game was excellent. And this game meant everything. This game is a masterclass of a defensive performance for Denver, especially goaltender in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Matt Davis was a shutout of a lifetime. He's going to save third round St. Paul, Minnesota, save third round the NCAA. Officially, a 35 save shutout. If there's anyone who wins Rosen Ford tournament MVP, it's this guy. Absolutely, Alec. And again, his percentages and what he's done. He was well over 970. I can see him trying to fight back tears in the interview and probably deserve because he had an otherworldly performance. He's been excellent for this 12-game stretch that you talked about as well, but his performance tonight is going to go throughout college hockey history books. Yeah, write this one down. 35 sink shutout and a moment of absolute jubilation for the Pioneers. It's, it's, and we look back, they have made the tournaments all the one time dating back to what I believe is 2000 something. Yeah, consecutively. No, you're right. Yeah, they, they've been in the tournament so many times. I was looking at yesterday up on Wikipedia side. I think it's been since almost like 2010, 20, that they've been there every single year after that. And they're always a force. And it's just, I understand, look, you got recruits. You got players and all that too, but how do you consistently year after year just have factories of good teams and good pros? It's unbelievable to keep that level of consistency. Yeah, yeah. This is a college hockey blue blood, and the most successful throughout NCAA history. And they certainly get the job done with their temp national championship. We see their bullion brothers lead the way for the pioneers, Shay all by Z. Love. Yeah, and they were really good. Again, I can understand why they're also NHL prospects. And look, Davis, he made some excellent saves. We've talked about it. But Denver, I think, did a great job as well as BC blocking as many shots as they have. Sometimes you do need your goaltenders to make saves, and they both were brilliant today. But these defensive structures between both of these teams were excellent. It just shocked me in the fact that really – I'll just say it. I don't think Boston College, they were comfortable since the puck trap. I think they were caught into a blender. In Denver, as you said, with David Carl, they had the game plan, and they worked it to perfection. And the, the amount of sweat that Davis has had, he's the sweatiest of that fight <laughs> year bunch. He is. He, he was worked at times. I mean, that one save alone in that uh, third part of that period is something that we'll never forget, and uh, that probably was the extent of it, as we're still going through the handshake line. So we'll stay with you until we get to the celebrations, and then we'll flip back over in between the wings of Maple Leafs. All of a sudden, that game's a little less cushy, and right now, between the Pens and Bruins, it's still scoreless, that at PPG Paints. So, you know, hard to believe now that this is the third straight year that team base in the Denver, Colorado area has won a championship at the national or the, at, yeah. at the major or the collegiate level. We had the Abs and DU in 2022, the Nuggets last year, and now DU again this year. Yeah, something's going on with the air up there and the heightened elevation, isn't it, Alec? They've had a good run of success. I mean, what can we say? The Broncos power has been transferred to the Abs and Nuggets. Yes, 
I think that's a great call by you. Man, oh, man, I know this isn't the Stanley Cup that's about to be lifted, but this is one of the better college hockey games that I've watched all year and two teams that are very deserving. I mean, honestly, I think if Boston College was playing anyone else, maybe they would have lifted it today. If they, if they face Boston University, I think Boston College would be standing here with a trophy at their hands. But Denver, I feel they were the most well-rounded team in the NCAA. Mm -hmm. I get Boston College. They're the best team in the nation by far and away. But, but either one of these teams, they're each deserving of a victory. Denver did, did push their all the right buttons, and they earned this trophy. It makes me wonder, too, because I agree with you completely. If you're Michigan, you're unranked to get in the Frozen Four. I feel like you're just happy to be there because you look at the other three teams in your brand in Arado and say, we're not at this level right now. Yeah, yeah, I feel Michigan, a team that's happy to be here, I feel they should be happy to be at this point. I feel they should be happier knowing the circumstances of the semi of everything. Yeah. I mean, they really gave – Boston College in effort. I understood the three goals toward the end got away. And then Boston College plays Denver and gets shut out after Michigan just got shut out for the first time in program history. Here we go. The celebrations are underway as the trophy is lifted over at your Denver Pioneers. They've been in the finals two of the last three years, and they get revenge from 2022, 2024 champions. Yeah, last year in early upsets, certainly they have, have pushed that over to the wing side. Mind you, last year against Cornell, they were goalie. Mm -hmm. And here, this time around, they want to reverse cards out. <laughs> they goalie Boston College. Yeah, they did. What an excellent game. Anyone that's been out there for XO Energy Center in St. Paul, Minnesota, the college hockey tickets are not cheap, Alec, but anyone that was out there definitely got a show today. You know, I would love to go to a college hockey game one day. I am hearing possibly the possible expansion of my alma mater, High Point. They have long-term plans of a hockey facility for training there, maybe even possible games as well. So if, if they go D1 later down the stretch, we need more college hockey teams in the NCAA. I'm with you, Alec, and exactly, if you get to that point in your alma mater, you get a chance to go do that, go visit it. Because if they're starting that, that probably means that it's going to happen here pretty soon. And I'm going to look here as Matt Davis is lifting the trophy over his head. There's your MVP, no doubt about it. Anyone else you want to throw out there, I think they're going to get it wrong. And Bill, it's Davis or none. Bob, let me tell you how many times Boston College fired at Davis mm -hmm. in the third period. 23. Denver fired five shots in that period alone. Wow. 23 to 5 in the final stanza, and he still shut the door. That is brilliant stuff. That is the stuff of legends in which goaltenders around, even former NHL goaltenders, current NHL goaltenders, they're going to look at this and say, this kid is special. You have to. I mean, again, this is a performance where legends are made, and we can't say it enough. I mean, this is one of the best performances we've ever seen as far as college hockey goaltending. And you can – it's no understatement that both Boston College and Denver have elite defensive units, but Davis still stood out above the rest. I mean, the save that he made, honestly, he had no business making. I couldn't really tell you any other goaltender in the college hockey that could do that. In that landscape, sliding all the way across from post to post and robbing with the left glove hand, that's as good as anything you'll see in the NHL. It is. And speaking of anything that's just as good in the NHL, well, the Bruins and Penguins, the, the Penguins have done a good job of making this a scoreless game. The Bruins have eliminated just five shots. The Penguins have fired 11 times in this game. So I'm going to flip back over here now, at least cover this first. I might not be able to cover the whole thing here, Alan, because I do have plans on the Sunday side. But let me at least stay through this first. We'll probably get through another intermission, give you some scoring updates, and then we'll figure it out. I probably will watch some of this, though, but I will follow along. I know you're going to be keeping braided breath. I will, too, through most of this. probably will be what I'll be watching as I'll be typing up the story. A couple extra wristers and slaps for Pittsburgh. 
And that was some good sequence there for the Pens. I'm going to look and see who's in goal today for Boston. Linus Omar gets scenes against Alex Nadeltovich. And Nadeltovich, he's shut down all five shots. That Pierce, interference may be the call here. I don't know who's going to get the call there. We, we do get a touch. But I think, let's see, slashing is the call. Pit Pittsburgh. Yeah, Pittsburgh fans very upset as David Posternock was just doing a showcase of his deking skills. And now we will get a power play opportunity here for the Bees. And by the way, well, the unfortunate has just happened in Toronto. Well, to quote Steve Dangle, it was 4-1! Oh, man. I, I'm sick. I, that's all I can say. I'm glad that the second period is over. My uh, impartiality may not keep me all the way through this, but you know what, Alec? I think I'm going to have to stay until at least the end of the third period so you can laugh at me as Toronto takes a comeback victory. I'm man, not going to poke fun at you. Man, oh, man, I can't catch a break. Uh, I mean, John Tavares, the hometown boy, the hometown hero for – the Maple Leafs in last year's first round series to win them their first playoff round in 19 years. He's just tied it up. Man, I, I don't even know what to say. Look, you went to the game yesterday. I think you and I were both speechless about Lucas Raymond and Dylan Larkin tying that one up before EK was able to finish it off. And then, as you said, a 4 1 lead and now 4 4. And Toronto's probably already locked in their spot. The only thing they want to do is beat the. Rival across the bridge, I guess, in Canada. <laughs> I mean, the Detroit River rivalry. Yeah. That's how he could stay for this original six matchup. So we'll see. 49 seconds left to go in the second. So, again, as I said, I didn't know if I was going to stay through the whole thing, but considering the fact that Detroit's fallen all the way back, I think we'll get at least that third and then give you most of the game between Pittsburgh and Boston because I love the type of story at some point and then step out. But, it's too important. I can't step out right now. But uh, what a game we had in between Denver and Boston College as that one went final after a 2 nothing score line. Can't say enough between Jacob Fowler and Matt Davis, but now we'll flip over here between Pittsburgh and Boston as Jim Montgomery is being interviewed by Emily Kelly. Uh, now the Capitals, they hold the WC2 for the moment. A win gets the Penguins back at the WC2. The Bruins... On the power play as Pasternak drops it back. This game's scoreless, but Linus Olmark has been sharp. The Penguins get this one aired out. The Bruins, for as good as their power play has been at times, they're one for their last 18 on a mad advantage. Meanwhile, the Penguins, they're tightening up the PK, not letting a lot, up a lot of chances. Good poke. Here's a foot race. Drew O'Connor, far corner. No room to shoot as McAvoy was closing in. Marshan also there. Marshan can't find the open. Pavel Zaka, Jacob Ross Kelpie, looks for room at the right side. Pasternak across, no shot. Marshan has it. Marshan trying to enter a deep. Say hi, but he was there. Shea at the near corner. Marshan jumping to the puck. So was Zaka as it sent back to McAvoy. Right side, Pasternak. Back for McAvoy. High swap shot. Blocked in front. Friendly fire. This rattle and stays out. I thought it was going to go in. Now another shot from in front. Several legs in tight. And it's behind the net. All sorts of action carrying on over from the natty. On to here. Everything happening in Ottawa. Back and forth. One timer Martian. Save the Delkovich. He hangs on with 239. Man, there was a chance before that looked just like the college hockey game when it bounced out in front of the post to Davis and stayed out. This is a good looking power play right now for the Bees. And McAvoy and Marshawn were all over it, but Alex Tadelkovich. He made the saves. So maybe they do have some blocks behind keeping an Elkovich at toe, but that shot, well, it wasn't actually a coast to coast save like Davis did for an Elkovich. That rang off that pipe. It did. Right in off the right, left side of the bar. My goodness. Alex Nadelkovich, he got some help from his friend there, but man, he's been good in the crease right now. Pittsburgh's been rolling, so we'll see if they can keep it going against the Bees. And when we think of Mark Andre Fleury, I wonder if some goaltenders go on and kiss the post whenever a shot bounces <laughs> off the post. You think you have to, Alec? It's that time of year. 
It is. But everything can happen. Just such was the case when Washington beat Tampa, jumping the Penguins for the WC2 spot and the Red Wings. Now the Penguins at their own end. One last player, and the Bruins won for 19 on their last 19 power plays. Another successful kill by the Pens. Well, as you said, make sure you keep refreshing that box score between the wall card standings. It's already bounced three times today. Oh, they go from Penguins to Capitals, and if, if the Pittsburgh does pick up a win here, Penguins once again. So we'll see who has tiebreaker. Pittsburgh has fired 13 times on Linus Walmart, Boston seven times on Allison Elkovich. 143, skating up through the middle. Now the right side, not too far. For Valtteri Kostinen. Now back the other way. There is a 48 and a 73 for Pittsburgh. Those being Kostinen and Keo Joseph. Is Joseph winning the foot race? But normally you associate 48 and 73 for Boston with Matt Grizzly and Charlie McAvoy. Those are their jersey numbers. A lot of other personnel has come and gone here for Pittsburgh. But you still got Crosby, Latang, Malkin, and now you add Eric Carlson in the mix. This is a veteran laden squad. As other teams have faltered, they have risen, and Pittsburgh has put themselves right in the driver's seat. Well, this might come down to Wednesday, but again, big matchups, Nashville, Boston, New York Islanders. It's a ball star on the faceoff. Do remember that we've seen Sidney Crosby intentionally jump the faceoff to start overtime against the Red Wings to try and jump the rush here, which is exactly what he did once the Red Wings won that faceoff. Smart play, what a, that's more than a 100 IQ. That's a 300 IQ play. So Boston has it. Frederick sends it deep. 122 to go. It's Patterson ahead of DeBrus, who finds the open Eric Carlson. The two countrymen one are up with each other. DeBrus sticks with it, but it's Russ. And both sides are pointing at each other. Russ is saying legal entry. All the Penguins are confused, but Boston is saying offside. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what the refs were trying to deem there. I can understand players being a little bit upset on both sides. Give you a reset here, 113, 13 shots to eight on the shot board. It's still scoreless, and it's anybody's call right now who's going to take WC2 in the East. It's everywhere right now. It's all over the place indeed. Back deep is Andrew Keith. He's wearing the number 52 for the Bruins. Was acquired as a defensive presence to shore up to the defensive core. Final man of the first period. Boston holds his own. And they just were offside by a nose hair. So we'll get yet another stoppage. Again, I'll be a little bit ahead of me as Zaka was taken down. No call on front of that as well. So a little bit of late whistles here from the Zebras from me, huh? Oh, it's games. So final East wildcard spot since April 3rd. Caps, Islanders, Flyers, Pens, Red Wings, Caps, Penguins, all in the span of a week. <laughs> <laughs> and now the Caps are back in it, but this is going to change here. Most likely if the Penguins were to win. We have to check back at the standings later on to see who holds tiebreaker. Good hand eye by Jake DeBrus as he carries back in. Jake DeBrus in it, on his back in it, and Alcovet stood with it. Michael Bundy tried to poke it forward. Joseph there. Bruins back in a backhand shot. Was too slow to get over to the net. Good block in front. Going back all the way to the boxing zone. 23 seconds left. Carlo. Oh, Allmark fell down. Bruins still with this puck. 17 seconds. Take it out to center. 15. Pink fires this in. Up and around for the far side. It'll be Carlson picking up with 10. Zaka watching. And I think Carlson's just going to run down the rest of this block. Unless there's an opening down for the ice. Which I don't think there is any. And Carlson just opts to run down the clock. As Carson fires it down, scoreless after 20 minutes between the Bruins and the Penguins. We'll be jumping around a little bit more here. At least now we'll stay for another full period or so, and then we'll figure it out. I know I will watch the end of this game as we're typing it all up for the uh, NCAA National Championship. But all mark 13 saves, Sandelkovich with 10. And that is where we are right now after one. Squirrels, as Alec mentioned, pressure points for everybody. So let's just give you the update for the wild card scores at first. So you did have the Philadelphia Flyers able to get a big victory. Again, let me make sure that I get everything correct here. 
I have the lighting in the caps. We'll start with that first because I think I overtalked myself here. So the caps, they take the win. Nick Jensen leaves with injury. But you got Sonny Milano with a couple. Yeah, John Carlson and Nick Dowd with the answers in the third period. They'll be winning that one 4 2. Charlie Lindgren, another fantastic game for him. 32 out of 34. Andre Vasilevsky, 30 out of 34. Tampa's been hot of late, but they are going to need Andre Vasilevsky to play like his usual self when the playoffs start. Yeah, they're locked into the wild card number one spot. And depending on the outcome of this game, it could determine whether or not they face Boston or New York. But New York is ahead of Boston by five points. So the Bruins do get a victory, whether it be regulation or overtime. And the Penguins are going for a, for something here. Fair to give at least one point at, rather than no points here. Because looking at this, should both Pittsburgh and Washington have the same number of points? Pittsburgh has tiebreaker over Washington and Philadelphia based on regulation wins. 31 to 30 at this current moment. Yeah, but I'm glad you brought that up because that's exactly what the first tiebreaker is going to be. Then it's going to go to season series and everything else. There's all sorts of tiebreakers, but the most important thing is you get those regulation wins, and that's what Pittsburgh has, especially when playing well of late. And, again, I referenced it earlier. I just make sure I found it. I did now. Philadelphia won one nothing over New Jersey. Their playoff hopes are slim because they only have a couple games left, and they're going to need other teams to lose behind them. I don't think that's going to happen, considering what already happened with the Caps, maybe with Pittsburgh now or even Detroit. But Travis Konechny is 33rd of the year, shorthanded from Lawton and Nick Sealer. That was the only goal. Samuel Larson, 20 and 20, and uh, Capo Cockin in 20 out of 21. So that means New Jersey, they're done. And Philadelphia has a very slim hope, but if you're a Flyers fan, I wouldn't really hold out that hope too much. I mean, it's very rare for a shorthanded goal to be the only goal <laughs> of a hockey game, but sometimes it happens. Remember game seven between the Bulls and Islanders just three years ago? It was Yanni Gord, shorthanded, that was the only goal. Yes, it is. It's also very rare, as you said, in the long goal. I can't believe that is the case. But Samuel Larson, he's had a good year, considering everything else as well, Kanetni and Sealer, again, they didn't keep Walker. They kept Sealer and signed him in because he plays pretty good defense. But for John Tortorella's squad, uh, I think they might be a little bit disappointed in the way that it ended, but I also think the same thing with the Wings. Probably didn't expect Philadelphia to be there, but when you play well, expectations are supposed to change. So for Philadelphia, hopefully they'll get a chance to bounce back next year. Yeah, hopefully for them because I want to see more competitive rivalries. They have the Penguins and Flyers, they can square up against one another more often than more competitive rivalry type games. We've gotten that back this year. We'll let's see more of that. So, as Alec mentioned to you a little bit earlier when we started our festivities, looks like the Winnipeg Jets, they're locked in the two seed. Dallas got the number one. Again, you could flip it a little with Colorado. They could get the two seed, but what I meant to say is Dallas locked into that number one after a gigantic 7-0 victory for the Jets over the Avalanche. Again, there's a little bit of housekeeping left to do between the Canucks and Oilers to kind of decide where that's going to go. The LA Kings got their spot, but Vegas Golden Knights could get third in the Pacific and play against Edmonton. We still got some other things to figure out there. Seating still kind of set up here, but really, Alec, the main thing on both of our minds, not just because it's both of our teams, every other playoff spot has been decided except for one. That's the final wild card in the East. So we do have that in the end. The Rangers have one game left. And for the Hurricanes, they have two games left. They're down by three points. They're basically going to have to win their final two games. For the Rangers, they just need to win their last one or have the Hurricanes lose that first game right. if they want to seal up the Metro Division. Yeah, that's where we are right now. The Carolina Hurricanes would need some help, as Alec mentioned, a couple wins and a loss for the Rangers on that side. We'll see if that happens. Again, a 2-3 matchup, if it is the Islanders, I mean, it could be Pittsburgh, depending on what happens with it, But because they have the extra game in hand here. But if you're the Rangers, I'm not sure you're really worried about playing against the Islanders. You could get goalied. But to me, I think Carolina or New York should be the favorite over whoever is in the third seed. Yeah, 
Yeah, doing it the same way. North Carolina faces Pittsburgh. It's going to be an emotional series. Because not just with it is. but also you remember that the implications leading up the Gensel trade, everything's running. Even Jordan Stahl playing against his former team. Yeah, you got all those, and then you got double for you between both teams that you root for. I know you lean more for Pittsburgh, obviously, but that's going to be a tough series for you. So hopefully that does not happen in the first round. Hopefully not. My heart can't take it. <laughs> that's why I'm glad to really only have one team that I root for. You're going to do so many of those games, and you did some of those too, alongside Cooper Hopkins with the Calgary Flames. They're going to have to wait until next year. And so are the Seattle Kraken. So Cooper went 0 for 2 on that side. I'm still kind of just dying on the sword here with the Detroit Red Wings, who seemed like they had everything locked away until they didn't. So it kind of feels like nails on the chalkboard to me for the Red Wings season. I'm just trying to get through Tuesday. Well, let's get back into this game. I think they may be coming out of the intermission. I don't think so right now, but they're showing the current odds. Well, okay. Is seeing now baseball highlights, the basketball highlights for all Detroit sports, all, all Detroit sports, Tigers, Lions, Pistons, Red Wings. Well, they don't need to show any Pistons highlights. Let's not make people fall asleep. Well, this is all Pistons highlights. Okay, well, then that's fair. Anything 2004, then we're, we're good. <laughs> oh, Ben Wallace. Yeah, and again, uh, Another name from that team, I think Chauncey Billups was just elected to the Hall of Fame. So congratulations to Mr. Big Shot. Okay. How he does as a coach for the Trailblazers is just his first year without getting your lures, but he'll have to elevate that team and play him up to their yes. potential. How he does is unknown, but I'm rooting for the guy. Yeah, he's, he's got nothing to work with. He's got empty cupboards all over the place, and you're right. He is going to have to kind of get everybody above their – pay grade and playing well. But the only way that you can really do that, Alec, you kind of get some talent on that team. Yeah, Malcolm Brogdon and Jeremy Grant are not exactly household names. They're good players, but not players that can take you over the top. No, not yet. I mean, it seems like Portland's going to be far away. And that's a team in a city, I think, that starred for some success. They had some fun during the playoffs a couple times, but the Portland Trailblazers – they have some diehard fans. Boogie Harris, Damian Lillard, maybe when you go further back, Domantas Sabonis' father, Arvidas, used to play for them. Yeah. I remember uh, the unaffectionate name of when I was a kid, the Portland Jailblazers, of all the players that they had on their team alongside, like, Rasheed Wallace and Scottie Pippen and some of those other ones. So they've had some very interesting teams alongside Bonzi Wells and some of all those names in the past. And back when they had Pippen and over the past, in, in the years when Scotty Pippen post Chicago, yeah. after, he, after Michael Jordan won to the Wizards and all that, I mean, Pippen was still a good player. He was. But he, had, he was said when he had two role, a number two option role that he had been comfortable with alongside MJ when he had Sabonis and Rasheed Wallace with him. And I, I know we saw the documentaries when he had the last dance during the COVID years and all that. But when I think about the general manager and Jerry Reinsdorf, and you have the situation between 96, 97, 98, you got six championships amongst Jordan and Pippen, and then you're like, okay, we're breaking the team up. Why? Just because you don't like uh, Phil Jackson and some of the other stuff on the team because you want to have a power struggle? It's like the stupidest decision of all time. And you know, the last dance, in, my, in our opinions, it could have may have done more harm to Michael Jordan than it would. Right. Was. Yeah, I mean, you think about all of that, all the other stories and stuff, it just doesn't make sense. And I understand even for Scottie Pippen, he had some jealousy issues as well. It seemed like their relationship wasn't all that great, but we all saw that as kids, especially for me growing up and doing it. You're just, you stare in amazement. And then when you think about it, like as you mentioned, in between the Scottie Pippen in Portland and MJ a Wizard, you just tend to block those years out because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't, not at all. Which is, which I have to say, even though I consider LeBron and Jordan as one A and one B in the mm-hmm. GOAT conversation, if I were to play with someone on, on a team that I were to choose between LeBron and Jordan, I'll, I'll pick LeBron in modesty. 
for the longevity purposes in his all-around game? His all-around game yeah. that he can help anyone out. Yeah, I don't blame you. Again, you're in the generation just ahead of me on that side where you're kind of walking into LeBron and Kobe and things like that. I can totally understand it because for me, I'll double down on it. LBJ and the longevity is maybe something we'll never see again. I mean, 21 years, he's still willing his team to the playoffs. The Lakers, yeah, we covered their NBA Cup championship. That's the end yeah. season tournament. They renamed it to the NBA Cup tournament. We're shortening it, it down, not to make it sound too long, but it does make total sense. That regular season games have more meaning to them. And again, that's another trophy that LeBron gets to have over Jordan. Well, it's the first time he's in there hosting this, but still, it's another trophy for LeBron, and for the Lakers to win this, I feel it completely makes sense. They elevate their games when games have more meaning to them. Yeah, they got to find a way to do so now when the playoffs start, because regardless of where they are in the seating, now, like there's expectations on Davis and LeBron and everybody else to get this done. Yeah, I feel LeBron has adjusted himself to being a number two option now as opposed to being a number one when he, that he has been throughout his career. He's letting Davis take over games, being the number one option. LeBron's the facilitator. Davis is the scorer. And that's what you have to have right now. I think we're going to get a couple more commercials, and then we'll be on our way between Detroit and Toronto. Admittedly, I might be a little bit selfish and lean toward this way only because – Pittsburgh and Boston is going into the second period, but Alec and I can flip back and forth and give you updates here because I know we'll both be watching. Again, it's good for you to have either multiple uh, computer screens or TVs out in front of you, Alec, because there's a lot going on. Oh, yeah, it helps having the ESPN Plus and, and all the packages around it. Well, I, I'm a little upset that I had to get Google for the <laughs> NHL Network games, but given that I have a job now, it hurts less. Yeah, it hurts less because you can pay for some of that. How much does Fubo cost you a month? Around seventy-five dollars a month. Seventy-five a month? Yeah, yeah, seventy-five a month. Well, I had the first package. Okay, so you're able to get all the other games, but still, that's almost like a kick in the teeth. It, it, yeah, plus earning things as you watch TNT on TV. They don't have TNT on Fubo. Man, oh, man. Everybody's trying to nickel and dime us so much here with all these packages. It would be nice to just be able to get everything on one and not have to worry about it. I mean, the full sports package. How about everything on one streaming service? This is why there was NHL TV, and it worked out. Yeah. And again, for me, I was able to get most of that. But ESPN Plus has been a saving grace for most of it. But again, I can't watch local games unless you have all the stuff out in front of me now. So I totally understand our pain. And when I did hear maybe like a few months ago that ESPN and Fox Sports and everyone else was trying to merge, I'm thinking, oh, no, how much are we going to pay now? <laughs> oh, well, well, we're paying less for ESPN Plus than how, we, how people used to pay for NHL TV because – if I remember NHL TV was more expensive for the full package as was. opposed to ESPN Plus, where you can get all NHL action, plus exclusive access to the longer ESPN articles, deep dives into analysis. That sounds like you just did a promo for the company. Good work. And Bill, I feel that's why I think even though TNT is ahead for the broadcasting, ESPN has managed to close the gap on TNT this year. I, I really like, honestly, and again, ESPN, give or take, but the way that they've been able to get all the NHL games, I and mean, not just because I'm a fan of it, it's been nice being able to switch through and have the stuff stream, and it's, it's a good app. It doesn't delay. It doesn't bounce around. I think they've done a good job with it. Yeah, they've done a good job. Yeah, I still give the S to TNT, but ESPN, I feel they, they've rebounded this season. No delays. You're right on time with it. Plus, the quality has improved this season, which I like. I feel I may have some hope for ESPN down the line for NHL action. We'll see, and we'll also see what happens in a few years down the line for college football. 
They've been there talking about a super league. They're talking about TV rights. Again, their TV rights have already been paid for for several years down the road. Again, just a bushel full of goals in the first as the Red Wings scored four times and Mitch Marner opened it. And then Austin Matthews, Nick Robertson, and John Tavares as this one is stopped by Reimer. Shots on goal are pretty much even, 21-19 leaps ahead of that. But the score line, if you're just joining us, is 4-4. Four to four. And Austin Matthews, who has 69 goals on the season, he was just one backhand goal away from his 70th. Everyone in Toronto might get the standing goal. Should he have scored that? I, I would have tipped my cap to him as well. I'll stand up and clap during our broadcast if he scores 70. <laughs> Don't say that. I'll second you. So around the end boards now, I got the update from Valley Sports. It's official. If Detroit does not get at least one point in this game, their playoff hopes are eliminated. So that's where we are right now. Cider, we'll get this one. As this will be spun back around the end boards here. And if you're in Detroit, you're already probably clenching your teeth a little bit, but how do you feel going into that locker room knowing you were up 4-1 and now the game is tied? Because, Alec, I heard some quotes the other day about Derek Lalonde, and I promise I'll get back into play-by-play -play in a minute. But I heard some quotes from Derek Lalonde say over and over the last month and a half and now the last couple of days that they're just happy to be here and there is no guarantees. In fact, Lalonde doubled down and said, New Jersey had an off year last year. Detroit might not even get here. If I'm Steve Eiserman, I'm upset at those words. Yeah, I'd be upset at those words. This is not the mentality that you want for your team. Malone, yeah, I get he's a good assistant coach with the Tampa Bay Lightning, running the power play and all that. But still, you want to get to the right mentality, a competitive mindset, yes. refocus. If, if Malone can sh cannot show that, I feel it may be a little more close to the party ways. Alec, I'm glad that we agree on that side because, again, you and I, I'll, I'll give you a, a blanket statement. I'm going to give Derek Lalone next season, the 24-25 season. If he does not show me anything or if this team collapses again or you continue to have that same type of mindset next year, I think Derek Lalone is gone. Yeah, if there's no improvement, if, if the playoffs are not the, and the, not, the end goal is playoffs in the end, that's yes. for the Red Wings next season. If there's if there's nothing right there on front, then if you're alone, you have to, you have to show that he, he can lead this team to the playoffs. If, if that can't happen, he has to go. And Matthews, again, he was one away, this time a deflection away from 70. Yeah, I just saw that there come across the screen. Tyler Bertuzzi, former Red Wing, and former Bruin. Kind of wonder salary cap issues there for Tuesday. We weren't able to hold on to him, but what he did in the playoffs last year for Boston, I know they lost in seven, but he was spectacular. And now Bertuzzi, a little bit late in the second half right now, is starting to pick up his David Camp. It's Robertson. Good entry. Stick track. His shot just missed. It didn't look like Reimer was in the goal crease. As it's now Mata. Mata now will take an outstretched pass off the backhand now, Dylan Larkin. He's a diesel engine always. Gets the steal. Try to make a pass out in front, but it bounced off a couple, about four Maple Leafs. David Kemp. So we'll back down. As the break, it tries to break through. He's taken down. Raymond gets shoved. And now the Maple Leafs in the blue and white. We'll be able to get this one back around the inboards as David will send it around the inboards. Spun back around now. Brody and Ghost pick it back up. 16:20 left to go in this third. Alec and I will be monitoring this game, and we're going to monitor Boston and Pittsburgh. I'm going to try to stay on as long as I can for that as well, at least for another period, all the way across the board. Because I do got to get the story typed up, but we do want to try to give you all the updates, and I don't want to leave Alec hanging because his game's huge, and I don't want to be selfish as well. But I'm looking at this Red Wings game only because they're giving me false hope after that first period. It's 4-4, 22-20 on the shot board, and this will be iced. Pittsburgh and Boston is now underway in the second period scoreless. A little stick tap between Michael Bunty and Kevin Shattenkirk. In the meantime, a little bit of a beat in between them and 
I think there was a disagreement behind one sequence in which they got them to not like that something. Is Michael Bunting a pickup that you like for Pittsburgh so far? So far, yes. He's played that Pascal Dupuis role nicely and filled in that hole that the Penguins needed after Genzo got dealt. And so far, you, you think of Bunting as a Dupuis, Patrick Hornquist type of player. Net front deflections, physical presence. And that, that fits exactly your right. That fits exactly what Crosby, Malkin, and company are going to want. So I think that's a smart pick up there for Dubas. They're showing to break it. Two goals, five shots, and nine shot attempts. And that's exactly what you want to see from the cat. It's a shame that he might need a couple more as he's talking over there with Larkin. It's a defensive zone draw. Again, any updates that you get on that side as far as goals, feel free to interject. I'm just looking into this Red Wings side of it. Simon Edmondson. Look at this now on the right side boards. This will be gloved down by Fabry and Derek Wallen's squad will pick a change. Sheldon Keese will pick it back up as it's Morgan Riley. Morgan Riley outstretched pass. Here's a good move for Pontus Holmberg. He gets the center ice, and this is stopped with the right pad of James Reimer. Back and around the net now. This shot will be blocked and go up in the netting. Well, that Tuesday match between Toronto and Florida could be a first-round preview. I feel that's a big game that's worth watching over. But tomorrow, because of family plans, I may not be able to do either the, the – I'm not able to do the Texas race or any other of the NBA games. Lakers Pelicans was my target. I'm not able to do that. I'm tied up as well, so I'm glad that we are able to get this broadcast in at least, Alec, and I think you and I will probably be eyeing Wednesday depending on what happens with the Pittsburgh Penguins. So that's the look, at least for me, maybe depending on what happens today. I wouldn't even have to worry about Monday and Tuesday with Detroit unless they get one point, as this is put around the end boards now for Ben Chirac. Do I want this game to go into overtime, or do I want the outright two points? I'm not quite sure right now. I expected maybe the Red Wings would get to OT. That's what we talked about the other day. But after being up 4-1, I can't help but feel a little bit sad as this goes around the end boards. So Benoit. Turnaround shot. Cider says no. We'll put this in an open area. And the cat's already back out there. This will be picked up here for Mortz. And I'll cross the red line. This will be fired in. Flipping puck in near the right side boards as they're showing the ice time on the belly bar. Again, you're going to have your top six bleed as many of these minutes as they can. I know they're exhausted and you got a back to back against Monday and Tuesday, but Alec, that doesn't matter unless they get a point today. It does. It's you need these points. You need every point that's given to you. Or the Red Wings, I feel this is must win. Even if, if a loss in regulation is going to eliminate you, I think you have to win this game outright. I do too. Again, you got six possible points, and you might need all of them. Pittsburgh might need all of them as well, as it's Petrie now on the right side. Again, Pittsburgh has the luxury where they can miss one. They're a point ahead of everybody else with the game in hand coming into the day, but still. You don't want to leave it. You want to try to dominate as much as you can. Pittsburgh's done that to get themselves back in the stretch because Alec mentioned it a couple days ago. A couple weeks ago, Pittsburgh's about nine points out of the playoff chase, and now they're ahead. Capitals up ahead for the moment only because of the win. This shot goes wide, but Pittsburgh has a chance to pretty much write that and take their spot back after today. So we'll give you those updates going across as it's 13-10 left to go in this third, Detroit. We'll lose it across mid-ice. David Camp now. Left side wall. As this will be bounced up in the air. Picked up off of Robbie Fabry. Toronto. Good glove save for Reimer. Oh, I had to breathe for a moment. That David Pasternak shot went off the post and right out to Nedeljkovic in a hurry. There's a live update. It bounced off the post and it hit his leg. No further than the, the puck came to a complete halt afterwards. A complete halt. I'm going to flip back really quick while I have a commercial break, so I'm going to try to join in with Alec for a moment. We're going to be flipping like uh, frantic madmen here. Oh, so the shots are 16 to 8 in the second period. The Penguins with the advantage. So Carlson off the faceoff win, moved around, peak with the first to it. Marchand now, the Bruins have fired eight times. This entry feed goes wide. The Penguins, they might have iced it and let this go to Hallmark. Yeah, it went to Hallmark as the ESPNB is showing Tristan Jari. He's been on the bench as the backup for the ninth straight game. Feels like you want to get some confidence for your starter. 
Carter down for the stretch. And the next game may be a good time to do so if you're the Penguins. Get him starting against Nacho. Here's Smith in front. The pass miss close to the net. It's Coyle picking this up. Coyle over to center ice. Looks for options as the rust to his right. Doesn't find it. Left side, Marchand. That went off the stick. Storm play is about to the boards. Shea is tied up. Pedersen helped him out. Marchand tried to jump in. The Penguins got there first. Still up in the half ball far side. Cannot be cleared. Pedersen did a good job of fighting the Bruins up. On a one-man effort, as this one exits. Kiki, the ex Kraken, XK, wearing the 39 under wearing the 67 for Seattle and Carolina in the last few years. Held in by McAvoy. Kiki was tied up. Chasing this down is Smith. Stanley Cup champion with the Golden Knights last year. Moved in by Frederick. Now up front, this goes to Johnny Beecher. One of the two rookies of the centerman for the Bruins alongside Matt Potra. Potra is out for the rest of the year. Beecher is still active. One of the guys that is uh, hyping up as one of the higher prospects for the Bruins. And he's turning out just okay, but next year may be the bigger jump. So, back as we go to Toronto, they're showing Patrick Kane after an interview that the Valley Sports Joint Team had with him before this game. So I'm going to flip back over. I watched some of the action. I saw that Nadelkovich chance. So if you call him that right, right in between his legs, nobody able to pick up that rebound. Well, nobody, not at all. Raymond with a chance off the rush. This one saved by Samsonov. Shot board is 24-21 for the Leafs, but the score is tied at four. Detroit had a 4-1 lead at the end of one. It is 4-4 with 12.46 left. They need a point to keep their playoff hopes alive. Is it funny for me to say that the Leafs, they unleashed the 4-1 curse when they blew that 4-1 lead in Game 7? And then last year, when they came back from down 4-1 on Tampa, it feels like the curse is over for them. They're a team that can get hot very quickly, and their offensive personnel, Alec, is still one of the very best in the league. That is how they get it done. Reimer able to make the save off Nylander off the rush. So William Nylander, one of the heroes of last year in the first round. I know it was Tavares was ultimately the hero, but they wanted that happen without guys like Nylander, guys like Matthews, Ryan O'Reilly as well, who had several big games, especially that tie going game three. Morgan Riley, tie going game four, overtime winner. Yeah, I wonder what the ceiling is for the Toronto Maple Leafs. I know you and I have talked about that in the postseason several times. They did win around last year. They ran into Florida and they took them apart. But is what Toronto is, what we've seen over the years, is that still what they are? That's the question we have to figure out. Yeah, so meanwhile, the Bruins, they get good, two good chances. One of them stopped by Nadelkovich, the other one was blocked. Pasternak both shots. So Pasternak, he is one to watch. You got Crosby, you got Malkin, Latang, Carlson, all sorts of talent there. Brad Marchand, I imagine, is going to get in the mix as well. Yeah, I would imagine that as well. Well, here it is Showtime with the puck. Oh, a big shot. Another save by Samsonov. All sorts of traffic there. David Perron trying to throw some fists on TJ Brody. And the Wings are trying to put some life in. Tyler Bertuzzi is just wearing the wrong color jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, it's kind of deflating seeing him going to Toronto. That's another divisional rival, another original six rival. Oh, well, Perron and Brody squaring up. Well, just, once again, it's an original six rival here. I feel Avalanche fans are going to point out J.T. Comfort is wearing the wrong jersey, but Red Wings fans were Yes. Right. No, I agree with you completely because J.T. Comfort was a huge piece of hell. Even Nazem Kadri several years ago, I never thought he was going to be a Calgary Flame. No, well, stranger things have happened where unsuspecting players would land at unsuspecting places. Mm -hmm. Tomas Hurdle comes to mind. That's one of the biggest ones to me. I mean... How is that going to work out there in Vegas? I mean, you think that's got to be pretty well. And then Mark Stone just getting activated. And all of a sudden, again, Alec, Vegas probably going to be scary as they've always been over the last few years. Oh, nearly a goal for Christian Fisher. 
Fisher now off the backhand as it's David Camp. We'll send this around the end boards here. 11 20 left to go on the third. Nashville's paced in Columbus right now. 4 1. Joe Valeno is getting pasted himself in the right side boards. This goes in across the Maple Leafs logo. Holy Mata and Goss Despair. We're almost halfway through this third. I still see that Boston and Pittsburgh are scoreless, but we're continuing to monitor that. Daniel Sprung gets turned over, and Matthew Nyes. As this is just punched out of the air. It's a few times I can actually say that, but that's the accurate statement. Picked up now for Goss Bear and across the right side for Brody. Now Sheldon keeps squad looking to try to take this right to left. Here's a long pass. Good stick in the line for Detroit. Might have saved a goal there. Robertson. And across the wall, Daniel Sprong. There's, there's a good reverse hit. Settle back down. And Detroit will have to start again. Pontus Holmberg has it for Toronto. We'll send this across the backboards now. Holmberg get a chance to pick this one back up. It goes across the Leafs logo. A fine entry left side wall. Nylander slow up shoot. Blocked off Petrie. Backing around the end boards now. Holmberg not giving up on this puck. Good shit for him. Lucas Raymond forced to steal. Lob ahead for Larkin. As he gets taken down, does Raymond and Benoit. Hand grenade this in for Toronto. This will be iced against Toronto. Oh, the, the Penguins had some good chances. And Andrew King, just the first goal for the Bruins. Might have been someone else, though. There might be another shot that might have deflected right in front of the Boston Bruins. Break the scoreless deadlock at the 11.52 mark of the second period. This will be Jake DeBrus. I'm going to flip right now just to get the goal call and give you any kind of color here, and then I will jump back in because by the time my feet comes in, I'll be able to see it. I think he tapped it right between the pads. Are the Penguins going to argue for any goaltender interference, or was it the Queen B? We're not sure. That document didn't seem to be get bumped oh. into. This is the Brust's first goal in his last nine games, if it stands, or unless we get a challenge here. I don't think we're getting a challenge. Nope, we are not getting a challenge. It is DeBrusque. First goal in nine games. Yep, Andrew Peak right off the rebound. Looks like Alex Adelkovich was not able to close that five hole, and DeBrusque just got his stick in there to put it across the goal line. And for the Bruins, this is their 49th game, which they score first. They got another one. Pavel Zanka. And just like that. Two goals in a matter of seconds and two nothing. You're kidding me. I just flipped back. Now I gotta flip again. <laughs> oh, just like that. Light and quick. All right, so let me jump back into this one now. So the Bruins take a 2 nothing lead. It doesn't make me feel any better, Alec. I feel for you here on this side because we're both kind of nail-biting right now. Still tons of time here for Pittsburgh. But 49th game scoring first, the second most in Angel. I see Zaka. Now in off the rush, long shot. And Adelkovic gives him a hamburger helper-type rebound. It goes right to Zaka in the net. And just conveniently landed on his back. But right for the taking for Zaka. It's two goals for the Brewers, and all of a sudden, I feel we're biting our nails anxiously because I'm looking back at the wild card standings. This is big. It, it, if the Penguins lose and the Red Wings lose, Washington may be on the driver's seat, but nothing's guaranteed. And that's essentially what we're looking at right now. And we're going to flip back over right now to the Detroit side, and we get a commercial. So you give me any updates that you can get for uh, Pittsburgh here. Quick shot by Drew O'Connor. Latest Walmart answers the call. 10.57 remains here in the second period. Zaka with the second goal. Well, still sightseeing onwards. How many seconds in the last between goals? Officially, it's two goals in 14 seconds. Man, oh, man. And, again, that was a giant rebound there. And Delkovic really didn't have a chance. By the time he ended up throwing it out there, it just fell right to Zuck. Well, where was the defense back on that play? I, feel I like agree. There was nowhere to be found. Left the Delkovic on an island. Here come the Bruins back to your side, but the Penguins jumped there first. Backhanded inside. The Penguins saw this one going out of play. Jeff Carter, Andrew Peak. What are jersey numbers? If you, you subtract for the difference, the first is 25. A little math in the play-by-play. -play. Good work. Yes, 77 minus 50. 
52, but for math classes around for say for those who are learning math, if, if you're uh, you one of those younger kids, uh, seeing all words and trying to help with your math problems, well, I got you covered. <laughs> Right now, I have the feedback here for Valley Sports and the Toronto Maple Leafs and Detroit. Again, what's happening in Pittsburgh could kind of change the landscape of things. But as Alex said, if Pittsburgh doesn't pick up any points, Washington's got that wild card spot with 80 games. Detroit would be at 80 games when this is done. And the same for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's a point ahead of Detroit. Detroit's two points back of the Washington Capitals. And the Flyers, because of their games they don't have in hand, they're on the outside looking in. So far, I feel in terms of goal differential, Washington could be the odd man out, but it feels like they're just still walking alive, just a shot fired wide by Timmy Lily Rick. They are, and again, it's a giant win for them today, but I still don't know, Alec, even if they will get in. And if they do get in, we had this discussion the other day, I think they're going to get uh, beat up pretty quick. Yeah, I, feel, I feel somewhere along the lines of four-game series sweep if, if they make it in. I do. I, I feel like whoever gets in is deserving to get in should get in. Again, that's how it's dictated in the rules. You and I agree on that. But I still would lean for the Pittsburgh Penguins, even as a diehard Red Wings fan, because I feel like they could give some other teams trouble. Yeah, I feel the Penguins – and the Red Wings may be the two most deserving teams to make it in to the playoffs. That's the three C in the Metro and the second wild card. Oh, here come the Penguins, two on one. They score! <laughs> Brian Rust taps it home, and the Devils cut in half at Pittsburgh. Brian Rust, he was a hero the other day, was he not? And again, right off the rush, that's a big guy to score. That's what Pittsburgh needs. It's two one. Yeah, one of those big time goals from big time performers. Pittsburgh's own Mr. Game 7, as I mentioned time and time again. The two-on-one and the tap-in goal just snuck it by the window. One of those lines over at Cars Free, sneak through the window. As opposed to pick a lane and stick to it, well, he did both. He picked a lane and he sneaked through the window. That's what skilled players do. And right now, again, it's a face-off here in the Defensive end for the Wings. We're down to 755 left to go in the third. Again, you're just joining us. Detroit needs a point to keep their season alive. Washington gets the win today. They have the lead for the moment. Pittsburgh comes all the way back. They'll take WC2 for the night as it's Robertson off his back pass. And Detroit, Leno, send this one back down. It's not ice, says the referee. Again, Washington got a big 4-2 win over the Bolts, but they did lose Nick Jensen, so we'll see how that adds. They're still trying to get Rasmus Sandin back. Reimer will stop this in behind the goal crease. This will bounce off glass and stay in play. Again, Toronto can't touch it for the delayed offside, so that means I guess we'll just take this puck possession, pick it up off the back end now. Here's a rush. Larkin trying to join in, pick up the steal now. Raymond will... Help provided as Larkin puts it around the end boards. Detroit, they were up 4-1. It's 4-4. They need these two points badly. So does Pittsburgh, but they're not in as dire of a spot as Detroit is, as this one goes over the netting and off play. Alex DeBrinkin, he has a goal already, too, actually. He's looking for the hat trick, just like what Lucas Raymond did. It would be sweet if he gets another one at this point in time. Would it be at the regulation or overtime? But this is a must-win situation no matter what for the Red Wings. Even if their season extends with an overtime loss, I feel this is still must-win. Yeah, you got to get two points across the board. We can say the same thing for Pittsburgh, although maybe they could get five or six, and they would be okay. My next goal, I'm going to call it here, Alec. I'm going to say Sid gets on the board and ties it at two. Good one there. Well, Brian Rossi has 28 on the season. That's a new career high for him for Mr. Game 7. Pittsburgh. It's no surprise that anybody that plays with Sidney Crosby tends to do well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. He, he and Rust have been a usual one combination when they both play with Jake Gensel. 637. We get another whistle. One time or saved by Samsonov. It was a pretty good one. Playoff picture. We've kind of profiled it. They're showing it again on Valley Sports. As of right now, 
with games in action between Detroit and Pittsburgh. The Caps have the second spot. Pens win today. The they'll take it. Detroit wins just before uh, the Caps do. When the Pen wins games complete, they'll take it. Then the Penguins can overtake them. So it's leapfrog all over the place. Lilligren with a chance. Austin Matthews tries to stuff it in. Reimer didn't know where it was, but he made the stick save. And now Austin Matthews, as Alec mentioned, trying to go for goal number 70. You just don't see that all too often. Stolen a couple times by Detroit. Now they got to get back on this back skate because it's Petrie against Matthews. A one on three. Austin Matthews might dispossess Chirot of the puck if Detroit's not careful. And now they'll flip it. It bounced off Marner. Sent back down the ice. Again, it's worth repeating, Alec. 5.55 left to go in this tie game between Toronto and Detroit. We're at the Scotiabank Arena right now where it was a 4-1 game. Detroit in the road, Whites. Patrick Kane spun around. It's John Tavares. He will gain the entry now across the right side wall. Matthew Nye, this is an interesting line combination for Sheldon Keefe. Here's a back pass, but Toronto's not there. David Perron gets the steal. Lilligren, as this goes in off the wall too far for Benoit. Now one more time off the kick play for Tavares. We'll try to stick and drag as it bounced off of JT Copper. We'll hold it down. Patrick Kane will take his change in the defensive core of Jeff Petrie. And across the right side line will gain the entry. Elias Samsonov stopping it behind his cage. Toronto now right to left. This will send it down. Fabric give chase. So does Goss Despair hibernating right at the five minute marker. I was a little shocked at that long shot of Kevin Shattrick. I wasn't sure if it was in, but that thing was in and out. In a hurry, went off the post, in the net, back out in a hurry, in the free one Boston lead in Pittsburgh. Man, oh, man. So, again, I did not get the next goal call right. I'm trying to pull for you here, Alec. You, you might have said it right there with Alex Adelkovich. I won't blame him, but I would like to think Tristan Jari would get one of these starts. But it is rough. And between Boston, Nashville, and the New York Islanders, you think at least two of those wins for Pittsburgh, I think that they should be able to get. But it's going to be gut check time a little bit with a 3-1 score rule. And, and the sign of overuse, Tristan Jari is coming in. Alex Adelkovich with his nine straight starts. Finally, the wheels come off the wagon. Jari is back in the net, and the fans are liking it. Wow, so we talked about that over the last couple of days, and I thought it was spot on as far as the agenda and what was across, because you can't have that, because honestly, Alec, Tristan Jari still tied number one in shutouts. I just saw it go across with six. He's got some skill. I'd say give him this start for the rest of it, and then give him the start in the next game against Nashville and see what happens. Yeah, folks, all-star last season, 8-8-2. Eight, eight, this season, 6-10-1, and one, but he hasn't been he hasn't been exactly playing that well after the all-star game. He has to get back to the form that he was before the all-star game, but perhaps him having benched, well, you need to get his confidence up. You yeah. cannot have, have the confidence of this guy get ruined through that stretch in which he has sat for nine straight games, and now he's coming in. We don't know what to expect from Jari, considering... His GAA is over 3.5 since the All-Star game. Yeah, and Alec, I can't refute any of the numbers, but I feel like with the goaltending tandem as it is between Jury and Adelkovich, if Pittsburgh is going to do well and they're going to get in the postseason, they need a two-goalie tandem. Yes, you need Jari to step up. You need Adelkovich to keep playing the way he was. I feel it's a matter of playing your guy. That means Jari. If you were to step up at the right time, have him writing hots. That's where I am, too. I think you got to do that to the end of the year and go with Tristan Jari because you know that's what you have. Ty Domi partially tripped. Or Ty, Max Domi, excuse me, as this is a call. Now on the right side, and this is sent back down. So the Maple Leafs get a power play, and they're holding on to the puck right now. And Detroit, if Toronto scores this late goal, their season is over right now. They're touching this puck still. Austin Matthews back pass, and they're doing a great job of just trying to bleed this down to two minutes. Tavares off the rush. He just missed the left side post. Hand is still in the air as it's flipped back down for Marner. 
So this is perfect for Sheldon Keefe's squad right now. You're cleaning this clock all the way down to two minutes. Then you take it, and you have a chance to end the Red Wings season. Finally touched. That was about a minute and 30 seconds. 2.45 left. We go to break. The Maple Leafs on the power play. Oh, this is exactly what you want if you're a Maple Leafs fan. So if any of the Leafs be thankful, come on and watch this space. You'd be a happy man knowing that you're on the power play here. But don't look down. The Penguins have over a minute 30 of zone time on the sequence. They're putting the cross on a pedestal. Got to convert here. Oh, they just gave it away to Trent Frederick and eight queers. A minute 40 of zone time, however. So you're exhausting the Bruins defense, tiring them out. I'm flipping back into that game as we get to a commercial break as Alex is going to give us updates. Yeah, yeah. Brooke, several Bruins out there playing over two minutes and 30 seconds of no time. Even as you beat, he's playing 245 now. Cross ice speed doesn't go. Still tired Bruins on the ice. The only one who's fresh on the bench is Jesper Brooklyn in the 70. Right around to the far corner, as the Penguins still have it. Back in the zone. More zone time. Keep officially three minutes in his shift. Malkin wants the point. This is not a power play. Now the Penguins will get a power play as it goes to Crosby. Who is back on the ice? Malkin. And the puck taken away by Wolverspoon. Finally touched. And I feel the Bruins finally get a rest. And it's going to be a power play here for the Pens. So both of our teams having to deal with it in certain situations. But a three-minute shift. I need some oxygen if I'm Jack Beecher. Oh, I mean, Andrew Pink, that is. Yeah. The acquisition from Columbus. But yes, for Boquist, we'll go to the box. Well, the Bruins do get a rest. It comes to the expense of him. So he'll be going to the box. Again, I am looking in between the Detroit side on the kill, Pittsburgh going to the power play. All sorts of intrigue here as I'm glad over the last couple of days we've been able to join into some big time college hockey matchups and some playoff chases. It's a good time of the year. Now here we are with seem to be heading back into the Detroit Toronto game. So the penalty killer set up. Larkin's out there, Charat's out there, Matthews is out there on the man of edge, Tamara's out there, Neilander out there, I think Martyr's out there, Riley's out there. So this will be a power play here for the Leafs, and they have possession to start with, and this goal could end the Red Wings' season. Red Wings need to get the OT to continue it. Here's a one-timer. This one from Nylander gets saved by Reimer at 88 miles an hour. Larkin, Chirot, desperate to get it out. Off the stick chop, this stays in. High slot, Riley. It's a cross pass for Nylander. Gets poked away. And Detroit's got to make sure that they keep enough space in between offense and defense. They can't get too carried away. Larkin, he was trying to make something happen and kill time, the captain, C for Detroit, as Toronto will start it. Two minutes left in this third. Austin Matthews, he's looking for goal number 70. Marner will get this on the right side. He dances, pass across, Reimer saves it. So this is maybe the biggest penalty kill of the Red Wings season. Not just the game, the season, the season. as a whole. Yeah, absolutely, Alec. Like it all comes down to this. If you're in Detroit, I know begrudgingly for some fans, they've been dragging you along, but yet you've been wanting to play meaningful games down the stretch. Detroit has done that this year. Next year, uh, that's all about Brad making the playoffs. Brad Marchand, short end. Oh, boy, Alec. We can't catch a break. <laughs> this can't be happening. No, because, again, if Detroit is able to get a point or get something, that keeps the window open for them. So it's pain for all of us. Again, I was able to get a point yesterday when Pittsburgh got the Rooks for Eric Carlson, but the shorthanded goal, it was a shorthanded goal for Jeff Carter the other day. Oh, now the rule has been reversed. Martian almost lost his edge, but still managed to through the window on Jari. So no matter what's happening, I, I wasn't expecting a win for the Penguins tonight, but still, a point would still be nice, but I'm not expecting it. The Bruins, I know they're the better team. The Penguins, I know, even if we, we go right down, and we, I feel we deserve to be in the position that we are. 
Mm-hmm. Right, he's gone through end of season, but still, this is not a good look, especially on the power play. No, and Alec, right, it does the same thing that it does for Detroit, right? Pittsburgh has got to win the next two games. And now the next two become must-win against Nashville and the Islanders. Otherwise, if the season may be over, and, and our top ten pick, and our pick will go to Sharks. That's the worst-case scenario. That would be. You don't want that. 45 seconds in Toronto's power play. It's Tavares. Slap saved by Reimer. No, no 70 goals here for Matthews. I know the Red Wings are looking to run this over to overtime, and a win would be nice. While we he did predict earlier that at, least at one point would be fine a year, but this may be the biggest point the Red Wings needed all year long. Then the next two become must win for Detroit. Yes, they do. And again, I think the course is because I agree with you in the open. When it's 4-1, you got to hold and get those two points. Now they're going to try to get one. Riley! Oh, it's not in. I almost called a goal. <laughs> it's oh. not in. So Penguins get one back. The answer back from Marshawn shorthanded. It's 4-2 with 4.08 in the second. Riley, Toronto on a power play. 25 seconds, stick in the lane, Cider. One minute left to go, maybe in the Red Wings season, if Toronto scores. Near the right side, wrap. This one stays out, saved by Reimer, down to 55 seconds. It is blood, sweat, and tears time. Toronto, touch. And this one's saved by Reimer, too. And as Reimer's continuing to, go, to make his run, it is Michael Bunting, the edge lead, who puts it right by Ulmark in the smallest of windows. And this 4-2, six goals in 19 Penguins games for him. As excruciating as some of this is for us, Alec, it's also very fun. This is a good time of year to get so many close games, to get so many live look-ins between this time for both of us. I think we've done a good job in the broadcast over the last couple days. Yeah, we have. Let's carry this on over to the playoffs. 50 seconds as JT Copper can't win it. Power play ends. Toronto still with the puck. Here's a feed in front. As this is pinned against the wall now, Red Wings are 35 seconds away from keeping their season alive. It's bounced out in front. Kane picks it up. He can't get it out, though. Toronto send it back around the end boards for Simon Edmondson. This is not cleared. Now gain the blue line. Does Detroit. This will be flipped back down. It bounces away from Edmondson. He's got to find it here as Detroit down to 15 seconds. And across the glass, across center ice, are we getting a penalty? We Ten are. seconds it's left. Penalty, Domi. Domi gets a penalty. Red Wings score on the power play. How the tables have turned. Oh, and the Red Wings season most likely is going to stay alive. Alex DeBrinkett falls as Max Domi trips them over. I don't know what the intention was from Domi, but no, I don't can't either. do that. No. It was clearly a trip, a clear attempt to slow down one of the best players. And the Red Wings will carry this power play over to overtime if they don't score here. Yeah, I agree with you, Alec, completely. That's a complete unnecessary play for Max Domi. There's no reason to trip right there, almost near center ice. And now the Red Wings, their power play has been good through most of the year. This is a must score. Again, 10 seconds, you can extend your season. This is now. To the right side, Doc, can the Red Wings get a shot? Turn around, Larkin, stopped by Samsonov. Rebound, got to fire it toward the net. It stays out. We go to OT, but the Red Wings will survive for another day. Playoff mode, Samsonov. With those stick with the stage. 
Good spot out in front for the draw. The Red Wings were able to win it. They'll funnel it toward the net, and Samsonov at least made a couple of saves with the left pad, as I think the coverage is just going to go to a break, so you can give me some updates here. And then we'll jump into this OT. The Red Wings still alive, at least until Monday night when they play the Canadiens. Alec, I won't uh, argue there. I'm going to go Austin Matthews, too. I know it's an easy one, but I just feel like you got to get the record here at some point. I'll go Austin Matthews. And on the other side, I'm going to take another easy button, but he's been hot of late in some of these OTs. Give me number 88. Patrick Kane. <laughs> i got to think back to the many showtime, overtime winners he scored between Chicago, New York, Detroit. Uh, highlight real goals to plenty. That's been a common theme for him. And to be honest with you, Alec, I think I would be happier if it was JT Comfort because the Red Wings need secondary goal scoring. Oh, point taken there. Here comes Brian Ross. He's got to go already. Oh, stopped by Brandon Carlo with 122. Held in at the left plate by Patterson. Bouncing puck to the near corner. O'Connor shoved away by Shattenkirk. Shattenkirk. And O'Connor takes it back on the poke. O'Connor spins it over to the right point. The pass is intercepted. And charging down is yet for Bowman. Bowman fires. And Jari stops that shoulder level. 104 of the Penguins. Got their 12th shorthanded goal allowed on the season. That's tied for the most in the league with the Canadians. And an octopus was thrown on the ice in Toronto. Oh, I got to see the picture of that, but that's got to be... A beautiful sight. You, you're seeing octopi thrown around every ice where the Red Wings have played at. Oh, well, we got one day where both a catfish and an octopus <laughs> were on the ice at the same time. Larkin on a four on three. That's where we are right now. It'll be four on four from the stoppage once the power play expires. Dylan Larkin behind the net trying to find a break. It goes to keep it in. 435 in the OT if we need it. Red Wings stay alive now, at least with the point. They'll be playing at least till Monday in the playoff picture. Got a back-to-back -back against Montreal, but they need this extra point right now against the Leafs. They had a 4-1 lead. It's Goss to spare. Kane shoots! Scores! I'm happy that you're here with me, Alec. Honestly, I went nuts on that one as I should. It was loose. Kane shot it. Larkin gets the deflection here. A gigantic win for Detroit. Hey, you could have fallen down 4 1 and easily lost that game, correct? That is guts for Detroit when they absolutely needed it. Right when they cleaned off that octopus on the ice, the Red Wings score. Dylan Larkin from Kane. So up to the moment standings, we're getting them courtesy of Belly Sports, the Caps. Even with Detroit's win, Detroit's on the outside looking in. It's no guarantee, but it's 87 points. That means Pittsburgh, if they win today, they will overtake the wild card spot. He's always a very eccentric man, Mr. P.K. Subban. Yeah. Oh, a, a likable personality. I, I don't get why he's hated by many. I think he's good for the NHL on ESPN as one of their analysts with Mark Messier. Just feel this. It just feels a little off with Steve Levy on with the booth with Messier 
and Subban and him not calling games. I feel it, it, he needs to call more games with ESPN, given that he has a track record of being the number two point by point man in the old NHL and ESPN iteration behind Gary Ford and in front of the yeah. league straighter. He was doing that in the mid-90s. The mid You're correct with Steve Levy. You'd think he's got to get more of those games in the broadcast book. Again, I got the deflection there. Dylan Larkin elated as it bounces off a cane off the deflection, and they're getting an interview with Alex to bring it. I'm going to flip back over here. I think, Alec, I am going to stay for the rest of this game here, and then I'll jump back off. So let me join you here for this third. It's only fair. I wanted to make sure that these games were close enough. But we've all been uh, biding our time. I'm going to make sure I rock here with you for this last 20 minutes and uh, go for the pens. Uh, uh, see, the both of our teams, they deserve to get in the playoffs by, by how we've been, the both of us have been playing down through the stretch. That, that game last night, the, the other day, given the circumstances, that, that may be a game of the year candidate, as Ian noted. Yeah. And this, and this game tonight may equally be as such given the circumstances for Detroit. That was a season-saving game for Dylan Larkin and the Red Wings. Let me just look at this again because we can refresh both of our memories. And I'm going down across the board. So what's left for Washington is a game against Boston uh, and Washington home ice and then traveling on the road against Philadelphia. Of note for Washington, that's back-to-back -back on a Monday and Tuesday. Uh, it's going to be as tough a task for Washington as it was for us going up against Boston. I don't have any expectations for Washington against Boston, given the differentiation between the two of them. But I feel Boston, I feel they're going to do much of what they did so far tonight, like against Washington, like what they're doing to us at this current moment. It's a 4 2 scoreline, but uh, ha, 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 I'm a little nervous. It is, it is. I'm a little nervous, too, on the side of whether or not Pittsburgh can win today, but I do not expect. I agree with you. Again, anything can happen. I don't think Washington's going to win out on a back-to-back -back against Boston and Philadelphia. I'd put money on it. Uh, yeah, I'll back Boston as well. So now, my goodness, Nashville, what are you doing to Columbus? Do we got to switch back over? Give me an update. Wow. Well, I'm going to go across this full scoreboard now. We'll give you the last 20 minutes unless we get to OT between the Penguins and the Bruins. The Red Wings got a big victory. Unfortunately for both of us, the Caps did too. Imagine what would have been the situation if the Caps lost to the Bolts. <laughs> it would have been completely different here as far as this wild card run. And Caps are breathing, breathing life in themselves. The Red Wings are too. And the Penguins... They're still okay no matter what happens today, but that's going to turn their next couple games and even our Wednesday into a game that we got to cover. Uh, that, that may be Wednesday's game, Penguins Islanders. Just wish that that this could be a Penguins Red Wings game and not a Penguins Islanders game given the circumstances. Well, it's game 82 for both teams, but what a night for Dylan Larkin. Yeah, we'll see too because, again, the Red Wings season ends on Tuesday. And Penguin season ends on Wednesday. So a couple of games against the Canadiens, who just uh, lost an OT to the Sens. So I'm hoping that Martin San Luis and company and maybe Yuri Slavkovsky lay an egg. And honestly, we're going to have to, Alec, root for Boston against Washington. <laughs> uh, I, I guess. And not to mention about the whole NBA sweep. All 30 teams play tomorrow between 1 p.m. and 3.30 p.m. Eastern. That just seems like overkill. I mean, the, the NBA has to do something like what the NHL did with Frozen Frenzy. They yeah. bounce around the league. Someone calls Scott Hanson's phone right now. <laughs> exactly. So I'm going to flip back over here to uh, any of the scoreboards, anything else in progress. We do have some late games. Again, the Canucks and Oilers, that's going to be a good one at 10. We'll both be gone by then, though. But the Ducks and Kings – and the Wild and the Sharks, I think for Wild fans, they're probably just happy that the season's done and over with. That had to be a frustrating year. I, yeah, I feel for Wild fans, they have to wait until the 2025 summer if they're going to start going after notable free agents. Because next season is the final year of the worst of the Parisian suitor buyouts before they drop back to the 100,000 level. 
Jeez, that's just that's absolutely ridiculous. But you think about for Bill Guerin, I think he did what he had to do, correct, to try to make the team competitive. But it's just really hard when you're that much against the cap. And even if you're um, Minnesota, every other the cap's going to shoot up for everybody. But still, it's not enough for them. Yes, it's not enough. Nothing is deals like for Minnesota. So I want to know, interestingly, for Carolina, and I know this is going to get racing fans happy, Joey Logano sounded the horn in the Hurricanes game against the Bruins. He is one of those guys that's always very fiery behind the wheel, Joey Logano. I always liked him. Yeah, he'll be starting 20th tomorrow based on qualifying results. Top 10 are Kyle Larson, he's got the ball, Ty Gibbs, Christopher Bell, Tyler Reddick, Chase Briscoe, Three-time winner of this season, William Byron, Ryan Blaney, the defending champion, Austin Cedric, Martin Truex Jr., and Bubba Wallace. That's your top ten. Michigan's own Brad Keselowski will start 22nd, and the Monterey native Daniel Suarez starts 17th. It's a heck of a field per usual. Again, Brad Kozlowski was always one of those names you'd keep an eye on back in the day, but he is still racing and still doing pretty well. As uh, again, we've given you pretty much all the scoring updates across the board. Everything in progress between the Bruins and Pens. It's 4 2 Boston. Again, as Alec mentioned, the Preds scored six. And I think they're one of those teams. I know it's against Columbus, but. Alex said Western Conference Finals. I say second round at least. I think look out for Nashville. They're not going to be fun to play against. They're not. Yeah, they're going to be a hard team to go up against. All right, so I did mention about family the other day. There was a change of plans. Initially, I was supposed to come back here just in time for dinner. As my, my, two, my two of my aunts, they were supposed to arrive here around 3. Well, flight times are sort of a mess. They're arriving hmm. now, so I think... I'm going to have to go for the moment to pick them up. Okay, Alec, good run, and I'll talk to you all later this week. Yeah, if, if, I, if you don't hear back from me tonight, then I'll see you later in the week. All right, sounds good.